That's all right. Hey guys! What up? Oh man! Hey, Fran. It's good to see. Hi. You. It's so good to see your lovely faces. Yeah, same, same. Wow, we Welcome coming back. Hot. They've been waiting. <laughs> I know. What? Oh my god! Welcome, guys. Welcome to Fan Club. It's me, Queen PR. I'm here with the crew. Our weekly wrestling fan club where we talk all the shit wrestling um, every week here on Twitch. Um, I want to shout out everybody who's already joining us. Sorry, I didn't realize everybody was kind of like waiting at the doors of the fan club. Welcome, y'all. Um, so <laughs> what we're going to talk about, um, Matt, I'm so glad that, that you brought that up. But today's show... It's a little bit more fun, a little bit more interactive. I can hear my, my voice still hasn't recovered from WrestleMania in LA this past weekend. Or I, I should say WrestleMania week, because Mania is literally just like the last part of a long ass week. Um, and anyone that has went and traveled to Mania can definitely attest to that. Um, so we just kind of want to get into the actual show. WrestleMania 39 for me was one of the best ones and i know hey rakarsha and i know a lot of people don't feel that way um and i know i might be biased because i was there i never know how to like gauge that but i have rewatched some of it (laughs) and i do feel like something about this mania was magical feeling it was bright it was like it it felt like the spectacle that it is meant to be um i don't know how you guys feel about it but we will get into how you guys felt about um wrestlemania 39 so for this show we are going to talk about the unpopular opinions about wrestlemania 39 and so this show is really for not just the crew but for all of you guys that watch us and tune in to us so make sure you give us your opinions about wrestlemania 39 am i fucking wrong was it the i've seen someone say it's the worst wrestlemania to date <laughs> they never watched part, you. you know i heard people say i'm part. just about to say i'm like uh, did you watch the 80s where they don't talk about cindy lopper 20 times or how <laughs> the von eric literally only had that one i guess not yeah or how about WrestleMania 27 say. where the only thing i remember is Miz getting concussed in the main event and the rock stuff and that's literally it Ooh. and i, I heard, heard about WrestleMania 27. So how did you guys feel about um WrestleMania? How did it hold how did it hold up for you guys? So if y'all don't mind, there is a tweet that I feel like sums up exactly how I feel. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are actually <laughs> are responding to it. Um but Justin, I'm gonna let you go while I yeah. while I find it. So for me it was a tale of two nights. So night one is arguably the best night one that they've had at WrestleMania since they've gone to this two-night format. Night two, I knew was going to be different because the way that they've been laying out the two nights, night one is more about the the wrestling and the in-ring stuff, and night two is more about the sports entertainment and the shenanigans. So night two had some highs, but the lows were, like, really inconsistent to where it's like, uh, like, WWE long term, y'all gotta figure out this night too, because night one stays kicking the shit out of night two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like y'all gotta yeah. figure that out. But overall, this was a really good WrestleMania. 
It accomplished a lot of things, very few head scratching moments. The main event, it was what it was. If y'all paying attention to the story, then you know it was gonna come to that. But leaving that, WrestleMania was like, that was a really, really good one. Especially you have three match of the year contenders off rip. Right. right. For me, so there's a tweet and shout out to Danny, aka Broom Mega, who says um, his homegirl said night one of Mania was the equivalent of falling in love and getting back with your ex. And night two was a reminder of why the fuck y'all broke up in the first place. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hmm. yeah. um, oh. And why I agree is because I felt like Mania, Mania night one was full of like redemption, full of like first moments. Like we had... Rhea winning after a long road of have having this loss from a few uh from two years ago hanging over her shoulder. You had you've of course the Us even though the Usos lost, you had Sammy and, and Kevin finally come in its fruition, their friendship, their their brotherhood in wrestling for the last decades, um, finally coming to this full circle by being tag team champions together. You had, and you had so many other like special small moments. Like even, even though I'm like, I was like side eye with the whole KSI and Logan Paul thing. Like if anybody from the YouTube community knows like KSI and Logan Paul actually used to beef. So to find him in a prime outfit, trying to help Logan win and in a backfiring. So Seth can finally get his lick back from not being able to win the Royal Rumble or the Elimination Chamber because of this person that keeps getting in his business like all of it all of it the first night was like magical like everybody got what they wanted it was a dream and then we come to night two where everything's kind of swept away from the rug because there are people that are pissed that cody bittersweetly did not win this one and some people were also upset about how you know the brock lesnar and and some of these matches didn't go the way they thought it should have gone. Some of them weren't long enough. Some of the build wasn't there. So I think the general consensus is that I agree with Justin. Like, for some reason, night one, I guess, keeps hitting the money. But I also think it's because everyone's so, like, high that WrestleMania is finally here when you put it on night one. That night two was kind of like, all right, let's give you what else we got. And then everybody was like, oh, well, like, I'm already, like, high off adrenaline from night one but okay yeah L let me just say this all of y'all are wrong okay. absolutely your opinion. wrong that's your boy, opinion. This, this is all opinion right but i'm hearing all of this shitting on night two of wrestlemania back to back years right so i wanted to do the intelligent thing and i wanted to pull up the card and you know just remember this i love y'all but you're wrong first of all the tribal chief retained, so that was already a plus. Oh, but, of course. But before that, we got an intense matchup to kick off the show with Brock and Omos, right? Exactly what it was supposed to be. Big, fat, men, sweaty, meat, whatever the saying goes. And then we got the tag match. That was something to be desired, right? But Guter, or the real Dwayne Allen calls him Guta. Oh, yeah. That that is, you, gotta like that, yes. you gotta say it the right way. You gotta go Gunta. Yeah, you know, let me tell y'all something. A little inside mm -hmm. baseball here. They was <laughs> He was so locked in, right? That shout out to Ben, Kaz, and David Shoemaker, they sat there, they did the interview, and well he was just so locked in, like he wasn't giving him hardly anything. When I interviewed mm -hmm. Drew McIntyre, me and Stack I Gray, he was laughing, joking, not going through because he was there to take care of business. He flew his parents in, he had his wife there, oh, he wow. was ready. And that show, and they beat the hell out of each other. They did. That Same was with um, you know, you, you you look at what we got from Bianca and Oscar, just so many. Um, just emotional. Uh, shout out to Bianca. Shout out to the Divas of Compton. Obviously, you know, um, everything that they did, our hearts and prayers go out to the young girl who was able to put on the performance of a lifetime. And then, you know, we got Shane McMahon back. Man, we got Shane O'Mac now. I jumped out of my seat. Ah, pop. Now, people might hate you on that Shane O'Mac. That was the Mac. biggest surprise. <laughs> that, that Pat McAfee, and then when Shane came out, I was like, so I wasn't hating on the fact but, 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 hold that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But listen, listen. I and know. then 
Snoop Dogg. Oh yeah, Snoop Dogg go. just audible and that, you know that made me like love him a hundred times more. <laughs> he he, we, we love people who love wrestling, who love wrestling like us, and when they get these opportunities, they maximize it. You know what I mean? And then the thing with that was in the record books, Snoop Dogg is one and oh at WrestleMania. He's yep. hosted WrestleMania. He's a Hall of Famer, and now he has a winning record at WrestleMania. So night two was entertaining. Yeah, maybe night one was a little bit better, but night two didn't fall by the wayside. It's just like last year. Last mm-hmm. year, and Justin, I love you, bro, but you said in this night two situation, you act like last year we didn't get a surprise of Stone Cold Steve Austin, that we didn't get an epic good. interest from the boss, Sasha Banks, on her way to victory last year or night two. Johnny that was Knox- night two? Wow. Yes, Johnny Knoxville and Sami Zayn on night two. Let's not give oh, night two crap. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, 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 Mr. McMahon, the epic stunner. You know what I mean? Now, we we might not like him right now because uh, he might, he's meddling some things. But night two, I mean, RK Bro last year kicked it off. They The way the crowd popped, you know what I mean? And, and, and the thing is, that reason why I wish y'all was there because the TV doesn't do it any justice on how loud it was. This is the first time, like, um, you know, we was all sitting together, right? And I'm sitting there, and I'm I couldn't even hear Queen PR. I couldn't hear Cal. I couldn't hear Andreas. I couldn't hear Ben. Like, and mind you, we all right there, but I couldn't hear. That's how loud it was. Y'all know how loud Krista B is, and I couldn't hear Krista B. That's how loud it was, especially just I don't know if that's a compliment or a shot. You can hear Krista. Wait, I mean, which pop are you talking about? You said which part? Which pop? Oh, I mean, just uh, well, I mean, plenty of them, right? Sammy Zane. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Wait, when he came out there, I literally was like, wow, when the uh, when they came out during the and then when they won, and then when they won, first of all, I was you know, I was I was in my feelings. You I know. feel like that was the perfect ending to night one. Like, it, 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 it really K-fabe, was. K-fabe, it, 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 in reality, yes. But in kayfabe for me, no. No, not at all. You know, and, 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 let me ask the executive producer. Can we give a shout out to the little homie? Zach? <laughs> the little homie Zach. Of course. We can give you know, a shout out to the homie Zach. The, the homie Zach. I, I, He's his dad. Kid sitting his dad took the information. His dad took the information from all the podcasts. Shout out to his dad bringing three kids to WrestleMania. God bless you, brother. Um, but they had a phenomenal time, and you could see like Zach was sitting up there, like man, he was sitting like he he knew his stuff. He knew his than, stuff. He knew better who he than most was of the IWC. For, why he was rooting for them, and maybe like you know wow. all that. We was like, oh, we need to book you on our shows. Like he mm-hmm. was having He's such welcome a welcome anytime. Time. Oh my god, he was. A if star. Zach has a YouTube star. channel, I am subscribing. I'm gonna yes. be an avid fan. Yeah, send it our way. Put it in the group percent. comments. He, he definitely um, made the night for sure. Um, oh, you lost your voice at Playwright. Oh, so you were at the Jabra Tears Viewing Party. Oh, yeah. Like, mm. Playwright was, mm. it was amazing. Like, mind you, the confusion was, if people forgot that LSU played that amazing game, by the way, because I watched when I got home. So okay. we did head over to Playwright, but Playwright didn't, this, didn't um, change the things from the pants perspective. It was packed. Mm. Legend was packed. How was the food? Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> I mean, listen, you're not there for the food. You're there for the drink. The drinks were on point. Shout out to my okay. bartender, Stavin. Stavin, if you're watching this, like I told you to watch this, <laughs> that that tequila sunrise, sir, I will be back Ooh. very, very soon. But anyways. Uh, Yo, shout out to Kerm, because that's what we had <laughs> at uh, <laughs> night one. Kerm got Kerm. us all to, uh, uh, tequila sunrises. Cause I was like, okay, oh, he was like, you don't want house tequila, do you? I was like, what kind of tequila you got? And he made me something. I was like, you know what? Stick with this. But it did again. It didn't disappoint. Shout out to me hanging out with the backstage brawl, your sports show. Oh, and shout God. out to hanging out with, of course, Jabba Tears. Still holding down the force. Still bringing people together at this amazing show. You had people arguing. You had, of course, the reaction. I wish I could have recorded the reaction of. Um, Cody losing because you had <laughs> so many mixed emotions. You had some people saying this is some bullshit, and then you had people with the ones up, like half the room had ones up, and then the rest of the room like was, 
Yeah, it, it was, was beautiful. It was a typical beautiful viewing party night. Yo, like. my heart <laughs> doing the match. Wait, so yeah. let's let's get into some of these unpopular opinions since let's we're do it. We're getting into deep into mania. Mm-hmm. So we put that's up, gonna be the only applause to the night. Ooh, I'm yes. done. <laughs> Why would you do that? Asking everyone, actually, we didn't ask, we just said unpopular opinions, WrestleMania go. And the tweet took off a lot of opinions. We want fan club to be interactive with all us wrestling fans. So this was the perfect 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 time so yeah let's start with honestly um someone that i'd rather talk about than roman and and cody is dominic um shout out to kyle we love kyle hi kyle he was also a playwright love him oh nice he says dom deserves more respect that man did his thing and let's be real had the top three interests of the whole weekend I don't think this is an unpopular opinion. I would agree. His entrance was, I was entertained by it. I was laughing. I got like, it told his story, but it was also just so ridiculous because bro, you were in holding for less than 24 hours and your whole like entrance and gimmick now is the fact that. You, and like the corrections officer brought him then like you have diamond crusted handcuffs like it just oh does, shit you did it's just, just so unserious but it's just so wrestling and it really made me love dominic and then on a personal level i was really happy for him because like i met who like you're at wrestlemania and you got this amazing entrance you was able to carve out your own identity besides your father you know you're feuding with your father but like he made it his own so i i agree with that like not for nothing i expected that match to be good but i didn't expect it to be that good and entertaining like firstly i like wrestlemania as a whole this year because they gave you like theatrical beginnings like how a movie would give you a theatrical trailer Mm -hmm. the fact that they really took this prison dom thing using officers bring him in to bring him in the van in that mask and then you had of course to follow up behind that like his him feeding into this character is going to go the longest way, even if he's not fighting with his dad. Like, you see what happened on Monday Night Raw, which to me was also very, 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 very smart. You see what happened on Monday Night Raw with the situation with Bad Bunny. It all is, is finally long-term booking, stimulating the way it's supposed to be. Him throwing water on his sister, not wow. for nothing. I did not see that coming. Did I see Aaliyah probably, like, Slapping the crap out of him. Did I see him shoving his sister? Yes, he swirled his own sister. And mind you, Aliyah, you we could tell you from daddy's side of the family because the way you jumped that barricade, sis, you in the wrong business. Anyway, mm-hmm. like it's bringing the whole family involved, like making it a full circle moment for Ray. We know he's a Hall of Famer. Like, and and, and then I want to get into that a little bit. Like Dom overall this weekend. His character development impresses the hell of me because for you to like, you like gonna not let the Hall of Fame get in the way of how you feel. You got up and walked out on your own dad with your, with your, with your, you said your new family, the Judgment Day. That even speaks volume to like, this is, this is the Dom you're gonna have and this is what you're gonna get. This is how I feel. Dad, I'm gonna whoop your ass tomorrow night. I don't respect you. I said what I said and I meant what I said, but this is me. Like, this is him finally. Are we gonna say that he's getting away from the Mysterio name? Yes, is this Dom Dominic Mysterio becoming Dominic? In my yeah, opinion, I agree. You so know, real quick, um, I'm sorry to interrupt you guys because I want to keep this with the people in the comments. Mm-hmm. Vaughn says he could think of at least four better entrances than Dominic's. Nah, bro. I mean, can you guys? I mean, okay, mm-hmm. uh, okay, she we said got go. Uh, we got um, Seth um, Rollins. I think was pretty good. Are we talking this year? Or in general, um, so it said that it was uh, Kyle had said in the tweet that it was top three of the night, I believe. Mm-hmm. 
You said it was the top three. Yeah, the whole weekend. Of the whole weekend. Um, so, Vaughn, let us know what four. At least you said at least four. So, Vaughn, you got to give us five right now. Boom. Yeah, I, I'm not even counting Bianca. Like that. Yeah, that's a whole special by itself. Yeah, yeah I can't even talk about it without like getting it's... emotional. Just because of the whole story of it. It's, like, mm -hmm. crazy. I mean, it was already emotional watching that, and from you know, but right. I mean, no, I feel like um... Edge definitely like. Oh, Edge! I wanted that brood music to hit though. I yes. know. Them I trying was, like, to merge both for it. Sound. I see what they were trying to do. Them trying to merge it is just like, uh, I got it, but it wasn't the same. Like, uh, like yeah, it, it didn't. Make, got yeah. The screen say you know, <laughs> I don't know how it came up on TV, but you we just saw Brood Edge. You start to pop, but then it's like, I'm waiting for that. Like you're you know, just that music is waiting. Iconic. Especially if you went to the superstore, they was playing like every every theme imaginable, so you heard it. At least once that weekend. Yeah, you did. But you know the thing about the Dom situation. What was funny was he told um, uh, Shoemaker and Kaz that like the whole water spot wasn't even planned. He just said he come out there, he see a system of water. He said, "Dumbass," <laughs> <And he> just <laughs> <grabbed him. laughs> which like is I like which is I, honestly is genius. The yeah. all the whole family like first of all yeah. you got to be different in wrestling. Right. To sit up there, I mean, he's like, "Yeah, I get to tell my mom shut up, even if you paid me. You had to pay me a nice, pretty penny. I, I'm not telling my mother shut up unless she says no. It's okay. This is for the business. But wrestlers just wired differently. Wrestlers, right. families, you kind of, you know, you grow up in the biz. Like even Charlotte Flair, she had no interest in being in a wrestling business, but she's been on TV plenty of times. Mm -hmm. Like kind of goes with the flow. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> and so what i'll add to what you guys have already said perfectly is this like from start to finish from the entrances to the story that they told to the in ring to involving the mysterials to involving the judgment day to involving legato del fantasma to involving bad bunny at the end if not for gunther james and drew just beating the shit out of each other at night too that was my third favorite match from mm -hmm. wrestlemania week because it was so damn good and we've seen Ray put on bangers before, but I was like, to see the growth of Dom from like last year where he was good, but he got overshadowed completely in that match with Logan Paul in the midst because we were just stunned by what Logan Paul was doing. It's like, oh, Logan Paul is legit good. So right. for Dom to really develop as far as a character, in-ring, and even storyteller in just one year to where like he's holding his own with his father, they're busting out moves we haven't seen, and then it just know when to draw heat to just be like god i want you to get your ass beat and then when ray took off his belt and started beating him like he yeah. should have been beating him all these months it's just like yeah they got it and then like all of it, it and he for knows ray, it like for ray i started tearing up because for you to come out in that low rider oh. with snoop and playing Latino heat. And then when and I saw music his transition and then when he I had oh saw his YouTube, that was a huge I saw his mask out. When I saw his mask, from the mask, the clothes, the music, to the lowrider, to having Snoop, to having freaking Snoop's music, like all of it, all of it was just like overload. And I'm just like, this is how that I've been talking about how they've been given Rey Mysterio the bastard child treatment of the veterans for so long. And now the bastard child is like watching Cinderella go to the ball and get Prince Charming and finally get married and go away. Like that's how it felt for me. But it was just like, this is so deserving of how a Hall of Famer should go out because he, mind you, this is somebody who's been in the business long enough to know this is how most of the Hall of Famers he's watched go out. Edge has gone out the same way. He's watched a lot of people retire the same way. And now he's finally getting that treatment. And mind you, how many people can go on and say that their Hall of Fame first match was with their own son? You can't mm. top that. You can't top that. Yeah, that's a good man. You on one today, Shorty. Because <laughs> like I, I, I never I thought, thought about that. In fact, yeah. you can't top that. See, I like that order. I, and we, I, I like, like that order. order. I like that order. That's a good order. And to hell with the guy that was like making fun of John Cena and the Make a Wish kids for John Cena to lose. I'm like, first of all, leave the kids out of all of it. What I mean, John Cena has done know. is amazing. Right. But and that match needs to end. Even how I say 
that match needs to end the way it ended, in my mm-hmm. opinion. If they really want things to go the right way, Ooh, that well, we got happen. some opinions that say otherwise coming up on the okay. fan club. <laughs> Bless you. you know, I like to argue, so let's get so, to the next unpopular opinion mm-hmm. about WrestleMania 39. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. All right. Okay, so at Car Rules has a, a few on here. Um, so oh. I was like, <laughs> my bad, <laughs> it's on loop. So no, it, it's about it's right. So I I wanna I wanna briefly touch on all of these, and then I'm gonna mm. let you guys decide which one you guys wanna go on. I like that. Idea. Um, but Let's vote. <laughs> right. So the la- I'll start with the last one. Stacey Keebler shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Her spot should have gone to Bull Nakano. So my thing with that is there's no like limited spot. So you act like they were in the running and then they chose Stacey Keebler instead. So I don't say anyone should have gotten that spot. Hopefully Bull Nakano is inducted into the Hall of Fame at, you know, some point. Second, I say it all the time, WWE Hall of Fame is not a wrestling Hall of Fame. Stacey Keebler is a Hall of Fame worthy WWE superstar. She did a lot in an era where, you know, she was exploited in a lot of ways and she she made she made something out of that and i think there's a lot of respect that needs to be shown to women from that era you know f- 10 years ago if you would have asked me to say stacy keebler should be in, a, in the hall of fame i'll probably say hell fucking no but just learning and respecting more about women's wrestling 100 percent hall of famer um <laughs> ray ripley is kind of mid i um that's subjective mm-hmm. honestly um mm-hmm. I look at Ray Ripley. I look at it's like, does she have the if factor? She has the if factor. She may not be your cup of tea, but to say she's mid, I think is is whack. Um, Trish should have betrayed Becky and Lita. I was hoping there was more to that match. I'm not even gonna lie. The Raw after Mania was also very lackluster. Um, I don't know that whole this their whole return is feeling kind of like I don't know, po- not pointless, but just like I don't know. I do wish like so- why like oh, why is you here? That's yeah. Yeah. Um. Right, thanks, oh, thanks. Brock versus Oma should have been scrapped and replaced with Candice LeRae and Nikki Cross. I would like to hear what um Siendal or uh, Brian clearly has a strong opinion. I have to say about that. With it needs to be the and and yes, I could agree yes and no because the build needs to be very very proper. It's not proper enough for it to happen at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. SummerSlam, maybe. Like, them figuring it out and realizing they hate each other during a 5-on-5 five of Survivor Series War Games, yes. Um, Not WrestleMania material. SummerSlam, yes, like I said. Other pay-per-views, yes, but not for WrestleMania. Like, the, the, the build needs to really be there. And then, mind you, also with Candice LeRae, she already kind of had her hands tied because Johnny Gargano and Grayson Waller's angle – kind of included her too so and the baby that cute little baby by the way so I feel like this season that's where her attention was and it, it's fair but again not at Wrestlemania at a different pay-per-view 1000 percent facts yeah Justin do you think Oscar should have won no and I, sp- I spoke on this on many fan clubs <laughs> and turnbuckle talks and it's because we've discussed over the last couple of um, like the last decade plus, how their WWE will start stories and feuds at WrestleMania is no longer the end all be all where everything culminates at WrestleMania. You know, I gave an example this week where like Shinsuke Nakamura, AJ Styles, that's where that feud began. It didn't culminate, it began at WrestleMania and carried into the summer. And WWE has done that many times, you know. The Rock and Cena, how did they set that up? The main event at WrestleMania 27, and then they extended a year to WrestleMania 28. So mm-hmm. with Asuka, this always felt like the beginning of their story and their feud, and nothing really gave any hint of Asuka was going to take that title off of Bianca Belair because Bianca exactly. had so much momentum, and Asuka was kind of like, so we're friends, are we not friends? What's going on here? So it feels like this is the beginning chapter in their story going into the summer backlash money in the bank maybe summer slam and then we can see where this goes with oscar especially if she goes full heel and goes full kana on bianca how does bianca overcome that but it never really felt like oscar was really going to take that title off of 
Bianca. Now, mm. when you compare that to Rhea Ripley, because I saw that Rhea Ripley is mid, and that was the one I wanted to touch on because mm -hmm. that match between Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley was the second best match at WrestleMania for me. Oh, one thousand! It was, it was such a physical ass kicking match from two women, and I have given. Charlotte Flair, some grief from time to time. A lot of that has to do with the way she's booked, and that's aimed directly at Vince for that shit. But there are times where Charlotte has her moments, just like any other wrestler does, where it's like, you don't bring an A game. And especially mm -hmm. coming at WrestleMania, where Charlotte's only been pinned or submitted clean once in her six, now seven matches at WrestleMania. So I was a little concerned about where they go with this, especially that Rhea needed to win. And to see the evolution of Rhea Ripley in two years from like WrestleMania 37, where she wrestles Oscar and wins the title, but it felt like, um, this doesn't feel ready yet. This feels like this needs to go back in the oven and cook a little bit. That growth over the two years and all the turmoil and all things she had to go through, especially Charlotte being her albatross to the mountaintop and to see just the growth from Rhea Ripley in two years to where she belonged in that ring. She belonged to stand across Charlotte Flair. She was giving it back to Charlotte as much as she was taking it. And both of them hit it out the park to where my initial reaction was like, yo, this is up there with Becky Bianca last year. This is up there with Sasha and Bianca at 37. That's three straight years where like that women's match is just like, holy shit. And Rhea is just as much a part of that as Charlotte. So give both those ladies those flowers because they went out there and fucking knocked that out of the park. Yeah. She's yeah. not mad. Not one bit. Um, I can't believe somebody thought Rhea was mid. Well, you guys were there. So to see it live, what was that chemistry like? Because you have to also remember, we're coming off the fact that these two ladies were supposed to do that in a pandemic hit, and they only had the performance center. So it, the gravitational pull in the arena, what was that like? I don't think it would have been that like, at the, during that time because – Remember, the story of that match was, is Rhea ready, right? Charlotte mm -hmm. kept reminding everyone during that year, I've been in stadiums. This is your first time in stadiums. And mm -hmm. it would have been okay. It probably, looking back at it, it's a blessing in disguise Charlotte won then because that made this win for Rhea more because she looked, like, intense. And when you watch the match back, you, you know, some of the stuff you couldn't see in the – Stadium was the facial expressions, was the taunting. And mm -hmm. to me, I mean, I love Charlotte versus Oscar, but this match right here surpassed that match. And because it, it was a different type of match. And you also saw like them going out there kind of proving like we should have been the main event. Um, and, and that's what you want if we're being real, right? If you're a wrestling fan, we win when they have those kind of backstage politics when mm -hmm. you got two groups of wrestlers that feel like they should be the main event because they're going to try to outprove the other. So the, the Usos and um, the, the uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, they had to go prove their point that they sh they deserved that spot. Yep. But the women had to go prove their point and say, no, we should have been that spot. And who wins? We do. So I thought it was a great right. match, but right. I definitely don't think Rhea's mid. I think she's been doing her best work. We got to remember, what was she, number one in the Royal Rumble? Yeah. Um, and, and, and that right and there. And at that. That's true. Exactly. And I thought she wasn't coming back from losing to Charlotte um, at WrestleMania 36. Really? I, was, I was one of the people, like, I was like, this kills her momentum. She's like, you know, she, and I think with the Judgment Day, she was able to kind of, like, really prove herself to me. I was going to say that the moment that, and I think we were all, were we at, Le yeah, we were at Legends. And the moment that everybody was like, oh, who's that trying to help Edge? And the moment that I saw her face, I said, no this is going to give her that push that she needs because she's already been the toughest rock metal chick that we needed, but now mm. she's a tough rock metal chick and she's heel. Right. It's this. And it's always her. when you let them be themselves um, for sure. Shout out to black thoughts. Um, so our good friend is here. So he did miss us <laughs> about um, um, You're up there. You're <laughs> right. We, for the most part, did agree with you. We gave Dom his respect, his props, and how he, yeah. you know, had this moment. And we agree his his entrance was one of the top three of of the night. 
maybe top five. Okay, maybe top. That shit was five. Amazing. That was hilarious. Even I got the sequence, out there. even yeah. the sequence with the him coming out of prison and people <laughs> taunting him. I was like, oh, this. Also, did you is guys see the old. officers like try to like really be like? Mm-hmm. One of them is from the Nightmare Factory. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, that's so fun cool. fact. Ooh. Yeah, uh, shout out to We Love Wrestling. I think that uh, account had everybody who like they tagged everybody who. Oh my god, I love that. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Get that um, WWE happy paycheck. Charlie, happy birthday, Dominic! It is their birthdays today. Wow, that is not nice. Don't be saying that. To Kyle. <laughs> Don't leave Kyle alone. Don't touch him. <laughs> Kyle is also an honorary wrestling, wrestling. Yeah, shit, the dude. mask. Yep. <laughs> yep. The mask was a good touch. I forgot about the mask. Can wear it. Um, that that was that was a really good touch. Can we go back to that tweet? Was there one we didn't touch? I just want to make. Um, I think it was about Oscar not winning. Maybe it's a lot of those. It's, it's a lot. Like, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Um. Well, I. I know Sandal's a huge Randy Orton fan. How did you feel about this um, comment from Black Thought? Oh, I like it. No, 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 no. Now my see, I like comments that make my brain spew. That's what makes my brain spew. That is so different. <laughs> you know, it's going to be something. Did it did. I'm glad. I curved. My, I've been. I've been learning the words of podcasting. Thank you very much. Been trying to say the right thing. It's got my. It's got my. Your, your brain. Yeah, my brain's turning right now. Like everything's turning because imagine her now going after every mm-hmm. like she has a title going after every single person on the roster. Like I beat your greatest. Like it's gonna be a taunt, like y'all doubted me before, but I beat your greatest champion. So now what? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And even the way that she approached Bianca in a sense, it's always been that. Listen, me and you, we've done this song and dance before, but just remember, I'm like, and, and in all honesty, we like to compare Bianca to John Cena, don't we? So what's wrong with this being our female John and Randy? Ooh, I never looked at it like that. Think about it, because now you have somebody who is a complete menace. She's a menace with Dom. She's a menace by herself. Mm-hmm. What's to say that when she, everybody's going to be going after her title, she's not going to continue being that person? Like it did take like, and in my opinion, mind you, even without the Judgment Day, I see Rhea carrying this title for a long time, just because she's not going to let it go through her teeth. She's going to let it like you're not have to rip it off of her dead body. That's the type of energy she gave me when she won, and even when she was going after it, she's like, listen and. And I think what's winning her over with a lot of people is that when she announced that she was going after Charlotte, she gave you a slither of vulnerability, but then Mm. afterwards she pulled it back and she was like, well, you're not going to get that this time because I'm taking the belt. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Heel classic shit. And then we talked about the story of um, Rhea and like the come up and everything that she's had to go through. Comparing it to Randy Orton is perfect because like, you can pull up the WWE Network and pull up all the documentaries on Randy Orton where, like, his road to the top wasn't smooth either, where, like, he went through a lot of stuff when he was younger and showed, like, he wasn't ready and had to go through those trials and tribulations to get there and really earn it and be like, ah, right. now this is hitting. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, I love that comparison, too, because, you know, Randy Orton is one of the GOATs like a thousand percent. And if we could see a woman have that kind of longevity and get better with time and better with age and all that shit, I'm all the way here for that, especially if it's like an edgy um, Rhea Ripley. Uh, So I want to take a quick break. So I did give everyone a homework homework assignment in the comments. They have to come with their unpopular opinions about um, WrestleMania and we'll pull them all up when we get back from break and talk about it. Um, Yeah, that works. What up, it's your boy Blue Magic from the Mixed Tag Show and also owner of For Your Wear. Now, I know you've seen the announcement for some of your favorite podcasters, and soon you'll see some of your favorite wrestlers too. I decided to expand my business to be a vendor so people from the wrestling community have more chance to connect with some of their favorites. So, check out ForYourWear.com and see if your favorite podcaster or wrestler has teamed up with me. If not, let them know they should. Also, if you're looking for a vendor for your merchandise, go ahead and reach out to me at Blue Magic Grind, spell how it sounds. 
But for your will, F O R U R W E A R. And shout out to those wrestling girls for being one of the first to join me on this journey. They merch is already up, so go ahead and cop that. So, shout out yeah. to him. Love that mild actually, and shout out to Randy because he wore his Sun Keek shirt night one, and I wore my sweatshirt oh, night two. I love it. I love, I love her it. designs, yo. I know. She has I a new shirt, They kind of, like, I love wrestling t-shirts that can, like, it can be dope. Like, if somebody sees the call Keeks shit, they don't have to, like, AEW to wear that shirt. Love it. <laughs> fucking, fucking what you said. It. <laughs> um, so, until we... Um, everyone in the comments must put in their, their biggest unpopular opinion about WrestleMania. In the meantime, while everyone does that, well, can we go to the one? There's one that says here Bianca and Rhea equals Cena and or in equals yeah. Rock and Stone Cold. Let's do it. Ooh. Let's do it. I don't even think that's an unpopular opinion, but I just want to touch on that. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna let you guys go because I can. You know, <laughs> she, she can go off for hours on that note but yeah yep. I mean you have memorable feuds and I feel like they've kind of been both like Bianca and I love saying this has kind of been the one that's been more pressed for fame and notoriety inspiration whereas Rhea's kind of just been like the lost child that just figured it all out just to be yourself and work it out and you you have the, you're always gonna have the rebel versus the star pupil, and that's what all two of those two feuds, Cena and Randy and Stone Cold and Rock, those are what that's been. That's been the playing field. Stone Cold, we already know we love him. That he's the crazy SOB, you know, driving Sambonis through arenas, giving everybody the stunner when he feel like it, just being him, being himself, right? Then you have Randy, who's a legacy. He's supposed to be the standard of his dad and his grandfather. He's not. Goes against the grain of his legendary father who becomes a legend killer. And goes after the goal because he, whether it's he thinks he's a, a you know, apex predator, he's just going to go after what he wants. He doesn't care who he steps on. Like, this is the same man who was attacking Stephanie and Triple H and tormenting them for years. Somebody who was his mentor. He doesn't care who he's stepping on to get to the top. With Rhea, I 1,000%, like I see, that's going to be the culmination of what a, what championship Rhea looks like. It's exactly, that's exactly what you're about to get. Yeah. I agree. Real quick, so it's, it's 8 o'clock, so uh, Diamond, Dynamite is on. And <laughs> Jay White <laughs> is, is here. Yeah, after... Um... The, it came out yesterday that he was no longer interested in WWE. You, you know why. <laughs> I'm going to go with that guy over there. Yeah. Listen, he, was, he looked at that news. He was like, eh, nah. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I told Cal earlier today. I had fact, a hunch, too. Yeah, he said, I guess we know why Jay White wasn't at Mania. He just hit the group chat. But I said, it's like that on The Simpsons when they walk in and they go, nope. <laughs> no, that's no. exactly probably what that's it was. exactly what it was. He probably like, have you ever been in like a bar and you're not interested in fights, but then you see two chicks just fighting and you're like, yeah, nope, it's time to go. You close yep. the bill and you're out. That's yep. what he did. <laughs> you saw two chicks rumbling on the ground with them buying Endeavor. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, like he literally that's saw them it. throwing on the ground with, oh, it's getting so by Endeavor. Oh. Vince is finally in control. Oh, they made that shit Mr. Raw. He looked at that and he was like, nope. All Close I my is, tab. I'm out. <laughs> let us all pray that he doesn't make the trip to Portland on Friday. Who? Oh. oh. That, 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 but that, no, because all the eyes lead is to right SmackDown. around the corner. No, but all eyes lead to SmackDown. If, I, if he doesn't, he doesn't want to be back on the road. So if he don't go to SmackDown, you know, and Triple H said they ain't going nowhere. You know, so I, I guess we're talking about M. Bison McMahon with that mustache and that dye job that he had announcing the sale, <sighs> which is crazy. I feel like that whole thing. I feel like I like honestly, we should have saw it coming when Vince was going to UFC shows. I mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. like 
Mm -hmm. I kind of was like, I wonder if they're trying to merge. Because, like, I follow UFC a little bit because finance-wise, I feel like they're not... They're trying to, what with UFC, I felt like people were trying to use it as a replacement for boxing. But now mm-hmm. boxing has its own legacy that it's back on the rise itself, that they're not in competition with boxing anymore. So I'm like, who else could they be in competition with, but can mm-hmm. also work with so that they can be a dynamic force together? Yeah. Yeah, it is all low key terrifying to me. All I, I got, I try not to think about it just because it's, it's like it feels like it's ours because you grow up on it and you want it to be the same of like how it always mm-hmm. was. So when I heard that it got sold, like it just made me like I just get, I'm like, no, stay here, say like how you were. So I'm hoping you know, that it doesn't affect the product at all. You know what it feels like? It feels like a house party that was going perfect. Everyone showed up, everyone's having a great time, everyone's having fives and singing along and drinking. And then all of a sudden, someone just called the cops out of nowhere and crashed the party and burned the house down. That's what Monday Night Raw felt like after like Triple H walked away, where it felt like the cops came and burned the house down. We're just like, what the hell just happened? This was just an amazing party. No, no. you know, have you guys ever seen that TikTok where they're like, if you like smoking weed, let me hear you say, hell yeah, hell yeah. And that's why it's like, I gotcha, get these motherfuckers. That's what it's like. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, I love also how Triple H shut down the question in the press conference. He's right. good, man. Uh, like, like, we're talking he... about WrestleMania. Next question. Like, that's I it. like poor, uh, poor Nick. Nick got dunked on twice because Nick knew what it was when he like signed that. up. Stop <laughs> playing. <laughs> Nick knew what it was. Me. Nick was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in here and be and tinkle my trouble. Some, yeah, you knew what he was doing. Stop playing. I ain't got time. For, for those um, that are on social media, like, why don't you guys ask these guys the real questions? Nick Houseman is a perfect example of why you don't ask those right. questions because man, you asking right. to get dunked on in front of a room full right. of peers and just like, ooh, right. and that's gonna it's go also, viral. It's like, yeah, we all saw that. Yeah, that was exactly, and it's also really stupid to think that Triple H is gonna answer such a deep question to a rant. No shade to Nick, but like a random journalist from some sports website. Like, yeah, trip. That's this is the time Triple H is gonna speak on Vince McMahon. Yeah, like sure, that's what's gonna happen. Like, it's 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 stupid. No. Um. So let's go to the next uh, unpopular opinion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All of the Vince jokes in the Not an old up. white major pig. <laughs> <laughs> Why y'all calling him? Not somebody said Vince is literally has to cut. Y'all need to stop. That's <laughs> come on, y'all. All right, Takashi so big man. Shout out to Tim. Tim has been following us for a while. Um, hey Tim. Has- shout out to Tim. Finn should have beaten Edge. Let's start with that one. I don't really think that's an unpopular opinion. That's think, not an unpopular opinion at all. There were a lot was... of people, even at Legends, there were a lot of people like, oh, so you mean to tell me they brought back the demon just for Edge to squash him in a hell in a cell? Like, a lot of people were not happy. <laughs> they weren't happy about that. And the fact and... is, like, all right, if this is Edge's last WrestleMania, it's okay. Shawn Michaels lost his last WrestleMania match. Right. Like, you know there's I mean? nothing wrong with losing at WrestleMania, but you don't owe Edge any more favors. Y'all have given him everything you could, including two WrestleMania spots. And that's why did you need to win? I thought this was going to be the time where I said, All right, I'm happy. You know, I'm glad he came back. As somebody who was an Edge fan before, like, all before. I have not loved anything he's done since he's been back. I've liked some things like that match with him and Randy Orton had really, really enjoyed it. But as far as like, I thought this was going to be the match. I was like, yeah, I'm going to see the hell in the cell. It's going to be a person. I understand what happened as far as the, um, you know, the injury and stuff, but I still haven't loved anything. And I just don't think he needed to win. Like I, I disagree it, it, here be only because like, Edge's feud with Rollins, like we were there and sm- on that SmackDown match where they just tore the house down, and then that escalated mm-hmm. to the Hell in a Cell match where they just destroyed the hell of each uh, other. That was a great no, story. I, I, you, you, you. Thanks for bringing that back up. You know, it, it, it was it got out of my radar. I got, you, but still, speaking of losses, I go back to his tweet because he talked about damage control losing, and that's not an unpopular opinion because I elaborated on this on Twitter when I saw this match, and I was just like. 
Okay, cool that it's cool that Becky and Trish and Lita won, especially that was Lita's first victory at WrestleMania, I believe. And you know, Trish and Lita are looks like they're gonna stick around for a while. And Becky is one of the biggest stars in the women's division. So you kind of well, you said that was Lita's that, first win? Yeah. Oh wow, I just realized that. Oh yeah, that oh oh wow. So you have these the, the baby faces that you always want to see the baby faces go over at WrestleMania. However, the problem with this is like damage control really needs this, this win because you go back to how they came in with so much momentum at SummerSlam. Bailey comes back after a year plus on the shelf with a knee injury. She brings in Dakota. She brings in EO Sky. We're so pumped. We're so hyped. We finally have a woman's faction. They're going after the titles. Bailey's going after Bianca. You know, the rest of Damage Control become women's tag, two time women's tag team champions. But then the last couple of months, they've just been taking L at the L at the L to basically everyone. Lita, Lita hadn't wrestled in like at least a year. Her and Becky take the titles off of them. And it just felt like so much momentum was going against Damage Control. You know, Bailey lost that feud to Bianca, lost every time she went after that title. Be- Becky was getting the best of Bailey when it became one on one. So it was, it felt like Damage Control really needed this win badly to reestablish them as that. Yo, that last nine months was for something. And I felt like them losing was like, well, this is the the, the nail in the coffin on damage control. Cause I don't know how you circumvent this and bring this back and just be like, we've lost for almost four months straight. And we're supposed to be okay with this without any changes being made, whether Dakota and EO turn on Bailey, whether Bailey just kicks them out and just like, fuck it. I was a Grand Slam champion before I met y'all and we're they're just losing all the time. <laughs> but I feel like now we're at a point where it's like you just killed this team dead in the water at the moment to where I don't know how you they regain momentum because it's just like <laughs> not just one loss. This is loss after loss after loss. And you culminated at the biggest stage of them all with a real bad loss to Trish and Lita. Love them. Hall of Famers hadn't really wrestled in a cohesive unit in like years. That that mm-hmm. that one's like, yeah. I I think there's a way for damage control to like revitalize itself and this is going to sound crazy but for some reason I feel like Bailey has to separate herself from them and I think Dakota and EO like even them on Monday like they weren't they they lost even without Bailey so I think that kind of killed them I think if there's any chance for them they have to win without Bailey or show that they're more than just like Bailey's cuz if Bailey's out then it's like, if you don't even watch NXT, people are not, I don't think, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think people are completely sold on, on Dakota Kai and Eos Sky as, like, individuals outside of Bailey. So I think, mm-hmm. like, that might need to change as well because it's, you know, Bailey's always going to outshine you on the mic or, you know, if you're not a big presence, like, Bailey is someone that is going to outshine you. So She's one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, I think she should. I, th- I do think that they should have won. Um, I'm not really... Like, I hate to say this, and it might sound crazy for anyone that watches our our platform, but, like, the Trisha Lita return ain't hitting for me. It's like, not. It's not hitting for a lot of people. A popular, unpopular opinion, but, you know, if you would have asked me a year ago to have two legends come back, win championship gold, have a story, mix it up with the current talent, stay past Mania, it's all on paper hitting, mm. but... On TV, it's just something. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the lack of store of of attention being put onto it once they once the allure of them being back, or the lack of build to Mania, or just the lack of like follow up the raw after Mania. But it's just not hitting for me. You, you know what? I, I I'm thinking about that what you just said, and it, I can understand. I think back to like when Beth Phoenix came back. That mm-hmm. hit. Uh, twice, twice she's came back, and I was never like I never disliked Beth Phoenix, right? Like I rooted against her when I was supposed to, rooted for her when I was supposed to. But when she, um, when she made her comeback, and her and Natalia teamed up, it felt like they had unfinished business, right? Mm-hmm. I think for me, if Trish and Lita would have came back as a unit, and their unfinished business was we never had the tag team titles. To me, that elevates the tag ties. I feel like Becky Lynch is kind of in the way. Like Becky and Bailey could have been a rivalry within itself. I think they gave it, maybe gave it to us too much in during the winter time, where that could have been a 
blood feud ending at WrestleMania. Um, and then give me Trish and Lita saying, look, we want those tag titles. We've done everything, but they wasn't around when we was around. And I think we could have got more invested in them. But, but Natty not- and Natty and Beth can also say the same. Yeah, but they didn't win it, but at least they was in the match. Right. You know, even if Trisha and Lita don't win, but like that was the thing with Natty and Beth. It was like we want these belts because you know they're best friends and the connection they had. So I, I think like for me personally, like you know, kind of agreeing with P, that's what would make me want to um really hone in and get invested in their comeback. Well, I think I the I also think that the reason why it's not hitting is because of what I said before, like the whole passe of your favorites coming back for that one more match moment or that one more scenario moment, it don't hit with this new um mm, audience regime. as it did with oh, the audience. old yeah. audience. It doesn't. And it's not like how we were excited. Who was a big comeback? Like, like think of how excited we were about Edge, right? Because we knew Edge. Like, but we already have already seen comes back from Trish because she came back and had that match with Snooki, which will never make sense to me. Um, we've seen tough that out of her already. Tough enough. Huh? That was for tough enough because they was getting that reality show. I don't care MTV. what it was for. It was horrible. Anyway, um, we <laughs> also had seven. The whole show was horrible. <laughs> And we also had kind of like that sneak peek of Lita finally getting a chance to belt with Becky at Lemonade's Chamber. So I feel like once it's done, and that's why I feel like a lot of people are so upset that Finn didn't win with Edge. Because after a while, it's like, okay, you're here, yay. Eh, okay, um, you're taking the title, but okay. Oh, you're creating a stable. Okay. Um, we kind of <laughs> at WrestleMania last year but all right oh you won why like we're back on the whole we're not letting talent grow the way and that's why a whole bunch of people you don't see people complaining about john cena losing because god forbid have john cena won yeah it's like you killed there for the second time exactly exactly but that's why that that scenario that and, and I don't want it to be like a let's bury the legends at WrestleMania type conversation, but mm-hmm. you could have buried one more person. Like, <laughs> I don't think it would have hurt Trish and Lita's ego to lose the damage control. I don't think it would have hurt their ego. Like, forever will they be the women that they were that made us fall in love with women's wrestling. They would have never hurt their ego to lose. They would have that- lost and that would have been that's been my issue with the part timers coming back, the Hall of Famers coming back because it's usually like they come back, we got to put them over, we got to give them a victory because people love them and it's nostalgia and stuff like that. But then you go away, and then the people right. that you just beat are still on this roster week in and week out doing these raw SmackDown house shows, and you just buried them or knocked them two, three steps back. Right. Like with damage control, it's like yeah, Bailey's established; she's gonna be fine. But Dakota and EO could have really used a win over like Trish right. Lita and Becky. And now when Trish and Lita go, Dakota and EO still gonna be there, but now you just knock the three right. pegs back to where it's like you're trying to crawl out of a hole and you just stumble them deeper in the hole. Right. And took the ladder away, where it's like now figure it out. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I think they should have been brought back to build the tag division. It was like mm. kind of stupid to have the tag championships in this random ass, like tag team match and then have a random women's tag team match <laughs> like it didn't make like you know what i mean like don't you feel like the championship should have been in there mm-hmm. or built up so that whoever won that match would challenge the championship like it just seems so like the random like, it just seems so afterthought and yeah. to have like these two legends that we all love you know i'm happy they're saying post mania because i thought it was one of those just mania things but like it really Miss opportunity to me. I think Trish and Lita should be putting women over personally. Like, yeah, that's what I, I love... thought they were here to do. Yeah. Like, and in all honesty, 
And it's it's so weird to say. I think that's why a lot of people were hoping that Trish would turn on them. Because if anybody can definitely boost these ladies, no offense to Bailey, she's doing a great job. This is her faction, this is her baby. But if anybody can really boost damage control right now, it's Trish. She's the best of the best. She's done both. She's been loved. She's been hated. Why not? You know? Mm -hmm. How do you guys feel well, about this comment from Black Thought? Because I, I, I've been feeling like, is she moving slow? Like, is this just, you know, and I think it's, it really is what it is. It's like the women are just better now than they were back when she was. Mm -hmm. brand, brand. And let's, and no, I know we've been dancing around this issue, so let's just go there. Ever since Royal Rumble, the women's division has not been given the time and handle and care as like the bloodline or like other storylines. And it's shown in the build with Bianca and Asuka. We had issues with that. It showed with Charlotte and Rhea in the build with that, where it wasn't hitting until like the last two weeks. It showed with Becky and Lita randomly taking those tag team titles off of damage control and we're getting this six women tag match. It shows with we're having this tag team scramble match on Raw and SmackDown, which then goes into WrestleMania because why? And then going into Raw after Mania, where all of a sudden you're hearing about rewrites and you're hearing about this woman's match got cut, that woman's match got cut, this one got remixed into something else. And it's like there has been a consistent issue with this going all the way back to like the Royal Rumble, where like the Rumble was fantastic. You know, even Bianca and Alexa wasn't hitting like it was. And that's, you can't really put that one on Vince because Vince wasn't really in those rooms. It's also like a Hunter thing too, where it's like, Somewhere along the way, we lost track of this women's division and how we were booking this and how booking everyone as a whole. Because even then, we we're like, what's Zia Lee doing? What's Raquel Rodriguez doing? Liv Morgan was just your SmackDown Women's Champion. Like, what is she doing? Can we, can I see Dana Brooke at least like once? Like, you just uh, apparently you're trying to make Lexi her. Evans like a thing for like the 19th time. What is she? But doing? why, and then why bring her back for anything if you weren't going to use her? I was going to say why? about the comment that, um, about mm -hmm. Lita not catch being able to keep up, and I'm usually hesitant to make comments like this just because you know you're not a wrestler. I'm not a wrestler, no. certainly not a women's wrestler. I just think right from what I see is that she's not been putting matchups with like the matchup with her and Becky Lynch last year was kind of a little bit more hard hitting, mm -hmm. where it seemed like now she's in the ring with people that we would have wanted to see these matches with her say 15 years ago but the style hasn't really like she hasn't like adjusted to the new style i think right? this is perfect i think black thoughts hit gonna... it on the head yeah <laughs> exactly you know and mm. when you look at it, like her she just not she's not mm. gonna be doing a lot of the flips no more yeah you know what i mean we got it's a done. custom plus CNG. Plus, we have a whole new crop of talent that's kind of <laughs> not for nothing. <laughs> I watch NXT just to watch Tiffany, like Tiffany Strat. I think mm, I, I think man. I found my new fave. Like, <laughs> yeah, and, and so Ruka, and so Ruka, her oh God, Zoe, finisher. I don't even know Zoe, love her, and I'm like, I love her finisher. I don't know like anything Zoe. About her. Like you have a whole new fresh crop of high flyers now in the women. I got you was about to say something about Zoe Stark. I gotta take back every negative thing I said. I tried to tell. Listen, we tried night, to tell you. <laughs> she she went out there and I said, oh, I see personality. We tried to tell you. It just <laughs> has a lot of We tried to tell you. It really does, and she's so passionate. And I think you know. And also, we gotta remember. And Shawn Michael said it too during the 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 random NXT press that we conference that we went to mm -hmm. he still sees nxt to a certain extent as developmental yeah mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. and i think i i think the narrative that wrestling twitter had was that now that it's competing with aew at one point that it's no longer de developmental and i think we worked that up in our heads but he does see it that way so zoe starks is growing into herself you know like um Stunt on these hoes <laughs> <laughs> yo Stunt, i was she there. did I was no, like, no, go ahead, so, girl. Stunt no, girl. No, no. So here's the story. Here's the story. So Mello joined the masked man the other day, right? So mm -hmm. they said, um, what's something like, are you censored? And he said, you know, sometimes he'll go to Shawn Michaels and say, I want to say this, this, that, and the other. And he was like, 
uh, I never heard that before. So he went to Alicia Taylor and he said, he said, well, I want to say stun on these hoes. He said, Star Michaels went to Alicia Taylor was like, stunt on these hoes? And she was like, what? <laughs> what do you say? He said, no, don't say that. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> so y'all make sure. <laughs> like even in, in my opinion, Mm-hmm. And it, I don't, and I, I fully agree with you, Brian. I never want to talk about them negatively, but it's like, it's starting to feel like they're like, yeah, we like, even me, somebody who I fully agree with Krista, the attitude ever completely messed me up. However, the one thing that can unmess me up is a fresh new crop of talent that I've never seen before, never heard before. They're all brand new. They're mm-hmm. all growing. That, And then on top of that, it's like, these are all you forget. These NXT girls are people that looked up to Lita the way that we mm. looked up to Lita. So they're like, oh my God, that was so cool when I was young. And now I'm in the ring and I get to do it. And they're doing it. So they're there's no, well. they're, exactly. There's no need. And we love Lita. Lita is doing great backstage. <laughs> backstage. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, and I get it. Like, I joked that this whole thing I felt like was kind of like a redemption role for her because mm-hmm. even though she she had a reputation that was amazing and the mm-hmm. whole controversy of her took weeks for it to be destroyed and she never got the proper recognition that she deserved, but she got in the Hall of Fame, she got it at Elimination Chamber, she got it in a lot of the places, she got it when she got to return back to Raw for, 20, for the 25th anniversary. She's gotten it a bunch of times. It's time to let it go now. We're done. Yeah. Like okay. with even with Edge, like I love Edge. You broke your neck. You've proven that you can come back. Mm. That's okay. Thank you. And then same thing with. And then I hate to go off and go into AEW, but with like Brian Danielson, if it not you turning heel, I would have mm-hmm. said the same thing, and I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah, let's. Uh, our good friend Stephanie Hardy tweeted into the show. <laughs> And she says, Austin Theory retaining the United States title was a mistake. Ah. Stephanie, baby, I love you. (laughs) I disagree. This this is an unpopular opinion. (laughs) I would say this is probably one of the first truly unpopular opinions. Mm -hmm. And that's not even me saying that I love Austin Theory. But, like, what would be the point of having John Cena champion? Like, <laughs> like, and not, like help his hair not to back. mention, oh, we really. just watched months ago what happens if you take that momentum that Austin Theory has built and just take the rug out from him. And he lost that Money in the Bank briefcase on Raw in the main event to Seth Rollins in a cash-in that didn't need to happen because you could have just accepted the open challenge and lost the briefcase. And it took him a minute to get back that momentum and then some. So for him no. to lose that title to John, it took a minute, Brian. Because even when I, he won, even when he won the U.S. title, a lot of people like I still don't see it for him. Like it's not recent hated. that people real are quick. starting it's me. to come it's around. Like on to on me. I'm not going front. Real quick, but I'm it, laughing because I remember. I'm sorry. When Brian said that at AEW, normally at 9 30, they have the women on. And now I'm <laughs> laughing because it's 8 30. <laughs> I think it was uh, I think it was Dylan said that last week in the comments. Somebody said in the comments. 9 30 is women <laughs> business. No, and now you know it's 8 30. So did y'all see like, you know, yeah, I know what's tonight. It's the annual Tony Khan um, announcement, right? Mm-hmm. And somebody said it's gonna be 30 minutes of him laughing at Co- uh, Cody. <laughs> that ain't right. That ain't right. right. Put in the comments right now, and this is the last time we're gonna address this. Who do you think should have won the <laughs> 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 main event of night two of WrestleMania? Night two. If you want to start a fire, Patricia, just light just it yourself. I people to put it in the comments and maybe why. Why, why, why do you think that person could have won or that person could have lost, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's get into it. Mm-hmm. Y'all can, <laughs> y'all, y'all can who, I am exhausted talking about this conversation. No, we're, we're not going to get into it. I do want to know what um, everybody else thinks about it. I'm just... It, I'm, I, oh, <laughs> just little, um, I guess this whole Stephanie thing you know, I can see where she's going, but the only reason why I would have said, like, okay, trying to play devil's advocate, 
where Cena should have won if they was going to be in a program and it would have been like Cena Rock esque, where then Theory was going to get a big win. So, only way I would see this if this was say at the Royal Rumble and then Cena beat him and then Austin Theory was going to get his moment at WrestleMania. But Austin Theory rose to the occasion. It's hard to deliver in your first like singles WrestleMania match mm-hmm. that has to open the show, that has to open the weekend. And you go out there and deliver it, not to mention that our way. And um, yeah, watching John Cena run down that thing was kind of nerve wracking. <laughs> and it's like for me, in my opinion, like last year, Austin Theory was kind of taken as a joke because mm-hmm. he had his match with Pat McAfee, and we already knew like it came on top, it was old thing. This man got involved, his old ass was wrestling in the ring. And now, though, we've kind of seen like this is somebody who wants to be taken seriously. Like, I'm not, a, he's like, I'm not a joke. I'm definitely not a loser. Yeah, this selfie thing, y'all got me messed up by thinking I want to take selfies all day. Okay, I'll show you where my worth ethic is at. And he's gone in time and time again to prove like, all right, my worth ethic is here. It's high up there. Who you got? I'll take your tough, I'll take your toppest guy. I'm at the top of the food chain. Roman, you already know, Roman done dissed him so that like Roman thinks he's like down here and Roman's up here. That's not gonna... That's not going to happen anytime soon. But where John Cena comes into play is that you have somebody who thinks he's John Cena. Like, it's almost like the F boys who think they're good guys, but really they're F boys. That's what Austin Theory is. He thinks he's, he thinks he's a good guy, but he's an F boy. But only thing is, him knocking off John Cena is going to make him more of an F boy than ever before. Because how many people can go into their first WrestleMania and say, I knocked off John Cena? Roman. Yo, be... Yep. That's. And can I say, like, just going back to, like, our talk about, like, legends and, like, Lita and Trish being back, John Cena does the legend thing perfectly. He comes in, he shows up at a few shows, he kills it on the mic, he has a banger match with you, he loses, and he goes about his business. We still appreciate him. He's also at a different, like, physical level, of course, but I think that's what you should do. Yep. And when you come back. to add to the Austin Theory beating John Cena Look who retained at WrestleMania. Our one and only tribal chief, Roman Reigns, retained as your undisputed universal heavyweight champion. What does that mean? That means those titles are not going to be defended on Raw and SmackDown every single week. But you know what will? The United States title. The United you know what on SmackDown? Your IC title. And that's where right. Austin Theory comes in. Because when Roman's not there, Austin could be the main focus on certain shows on Raw because he has this United States title. He has been champion for a while. He has beaten John Cena. And now you got to go after him. Oh, they cooking. They are cooking. They are cooking in the and comment even, and, section. And even when I think about just this, I want to be the one to touch on it last because this comment section is on fire. Thanks for lighting the house. But in my opinion, too, you're, <laughs> we're also we're also counting those two, right? We're also now accounting the fact that you have Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, two of the now they're now peeking into being the main characters of not only SmackDown but of Raw because they were on Raw this week. Now they have the opportunity to be at two places at the same time and also be pushed the way they mainly have been pushed. Because Kevin Owens, I, I don't care what people think, I think Kevin Owens has earned all the rights to being a top guy. I think the way that Sami. Zayn has worked us into this telenovela or the young and the bloodline. <laughs> the way that he's worked us into that, he deserves to be a top guy. Now you have two of your deserve to be top guys holding the second most important titles on the roster, and that's the Universal Tag Team Championships. That match with the that's Street awesome. Profits was amazing. Mm-hmm. Like it was like watching, it was like watching those, like it was like watching symmetry in motion. It was perfect. Imagine how many tag team championship matches going to be like that now on both sides. The one boost that needs it the most has been the tag team division. And we're finally going to get that without Bingo. Roman Reigns defending the title all the time. Bingo. Yeah. See, you see the vision. I see, I see it. I, saw, I, see, I see the vision. I think it just kind of makes that moment because I think of how divisive the crowd was when Cody does finally win. Because now we're we're building him up more as an extreme baby face with the whole Brock Lesnar shit. When he does finally win, it's gonna be 
insane. It is. Mm -hmm. Because imagine now people were pissed that he didn't win now. But now you have a bunch of people that are going to be on his side. The way that a lot of people, because, and and this is my unpopular opinion, a lot of people were not on Cody's side. A lot of people. A lot of people may say they were. A lot of people may be happy they were from, from what I looked on social. Being at Legends, being at Playwright, hearing people talk, hearing podcasters talk. Like, not a lot of people were rooting for Cody because of how this whole thing was set up. And it's not his fault he got injured. I feel like if he had never gotten injured, it would have been set up completely differently. The build would have been different. And had he had lost, it would have been an even greater disappointment. But, it, like, it did not need to happen because of that. Now, if you put it more in a longevity space, so where you put him through these up and hill battles, you put him through these losses, you put him through these beat-ups, and then if he goes back again and he challenges Roman... And he wins, the reaction is gonna be a complete what 80. In he my opinion, have some hard time, baby. Exactly. And Cody ain't had no hard time. No, we, like that, we get you. We we only know you as your father's son. That's fine. That's great. We're gonna love Dusty forever. But can you endure what your father endured in this business? And that's what people are gonna put their eyes on now. And I'll yeah. piggyback off of this. I'll give this different perspective of it. It's like what do we always love out of our baby faces? The chase to the top. And when they finally achieve that goal, what it means. Because I've seen your, all you guys slamming WWE on this. WWE is not the only company that does this. How long did mm -hmm. AEW make Hangman Adam Page jump through hoops and ladders before he became AEW World <clears throat> Champion? How long did New Japan Man. make Okada and Kenny Omega and Tetsuya Naito jump through every single hoop ladder and shoes before they became iwgp heavyweight champion i feel like NXT, people forget how long did gargano lose over and over and over again in title matches before he finally beat adam cole in a two out of three falls and take over new york y'all weren't if comment in the comment or hit me up if y'all remember when aj styles was trying to win his first championship and impact before impact was impact and it was still tna that man got the John Cena after the rock treatment real hard for a year and a half before he got his first belt. So it's, to piggyback on what Justin says, it's not the first time at the rodeo. There are other rodeos like this. Everybody just needs to sit down and watch the rodeo, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Even your tribal chief didn't win his first time out. He got cashed in by Seth Rollins at WrestleMania exactly. 31. Exactly. Like, everybody... Let's be real. None of half of Roman Reigns WrestleMania matches don't matter. <laughs> you said half. People, somebody which, even suggested on Twitter half? that he should go against Triple H, and I the responded. Half, I was like, if you want to see Triple H, you know, get his ass whooped a second time because Roman handed him that WrestleMania, by all means, go ahead. But I don't see the point in us of taking him out of retirement to do that. No, nah, Triple H was in a match by himself. Because Roman wasn't hitting then, if we be honest. Triple H was in the match. Like... <laughs> I don't know. No, yeah, man. All that for Roman to still win, but. Yeah, well, you had to put him over, but sheesh. Let's continue. We gotta continue. The story Sorry, right? is still going. The story is still going. Thank and you. To answer Dylan's question, I don't know if I don't know if Cody is the one to take it, but at least from the reaction that he got in the arena when he lost, I would say yes. Just if I was someone backstage listening to to crowds, I would say he might be the one to take it. Yeah, but um, right now maybe not. Just um, as a fan. I, I don't mind Roman keeping it for as long as he wants. Oh, yeah, man. So, you know. If I'm working in well. WWE backstage, I'm taking note of that crowd reaction before, during, and after that main event and say, yes, mm -hmm. Cody is the one to take it because we had questions going into this match. This shows the fans really do want him as champ. It's just not yet. Yeah. We've got to tell that story. Right. But when it, when it hits, it's going to hit because out of Roman's entire title, Offenses, that's the closest I, in my personal opinion, I've seen it to where that was a split 50 50 crowd, and that's the closest I've seen where, like, yo, Roman can actually lose this because I didn't yeah. think Drew was taking that clash at the castle. I've never thought any other title defenses they were going to win, but this was one where I was like, 
oh shit, Cody might actually win this. Mm -hmm. And that just shows you in this three years, it's like, yo, Cody's somewhere on this level where like everyone else ain't really on that level yet. So Cody, like if I'm management, I'm like, yo, yeah, at some point this will happen. Just not yet. I still stand by what I said. It doesn't make sense aesthetically. You mean tell me Roman beat the uh, Brock Lesnar, but then gonna lose to Cody Rose? Just look at that on paper. If you try to explain that to a wrestling fan, it doesn't make sense right now. Now, if you You're say right. Cody beats Brock Lesnar and then okay, now it makes sense. You know, that's why I'm glad he got to get his hard Sorry. time. That's not like the story is not even halfway over. But that's mm-hmm. what we need. We need more of that. Yeah. We don't need like we don't need like half storytelling people want full storytelling like why do you think we sat there so invested in Sami Zayn being with ray sorry being with the bloodline why do you think we're so invested in dom turning on his dad and then full circle coming to wrestlemania and then even after that you got bad bunny getting involved and damian priest getting involved and now it looks like that's like people people don't miss storytelling before wrestlemania enough And that's why I think the disappointment kicks in because we're so used to, like I said before, I've said it in past fan clubs where, uh, oh, we don't know where this story is going. We only know where the main event's going, but you don't know where the rest of the stories are brewing until like two or three months before WrestleMania. This to me, and this is why I actually think this will go down as one of my favorite WrestleManias to where I can honestly say every single thing that happens, um, maybe one or two matches didn't have the long appreciated slow branding to have every single match on this card had an appreciated slow burn to it every single one all of it had a story behind it all of it had a a plot like a movie literally in hollywood this to me is what makes me excited about wrestlemania that's what made me excited to see you know um, Hollywood Hulk Hogan back when before I knew what I knew and The Rock go back and back because they were at it for months. This is what even made me excited to be in MetLife to see John Cena and The Rock go through it a second time because we I had seen it build after being away from wrestling for so long. You need this stuff to make everybody enjoy all of this. And if yeah. you can't appreciate that, then I don't know what to tell you. AW is right here on TV. Go watch more short build matches if you want to see that. The story's not over. Hashtag exactly. Dream Deferred. Exactly. <laughs> Word. Um, so just to close out our uh WrestleMania talk, I would like to get everyone's grade. If you had that's not a grade, if you had to rate WrestleMania 39. Also, can we just talk about how awesome WrestleMania is in general. The fact that mm-hmm. this is like that one like big, big, big thing that like so many people across the world of like all different fucking nationalities, demographics and all that. Like it's one thing that we all travel to, we all are excited about. And it's another one of the books, 39. Like 39. 39 fucking, there's peop- there are people that went to WrestleMania that wasn't even born but when I watched my first fucking WrestleMania and you know, the legacy of that is so, is so special to me. So how would you guys rate WrestleMania 39 in Hollywood? WrestleMania goes Hollywood. How do you guys rate it? It looked like a star studded event to me. It reminded me of what they were trying to build it back in the day. Like, when you saw Cindy Lauper come to the ring, like all these, like when you started seeing celebrities come into like WrestleMania more, it finally felt like that here. Because like not for nothing, even I found it funny because I looked at George Kettle in the crowd and my dad was like, oh, isn't that the guy from the 49ers? I was like, no oh, shit. What's he doing, doing a clothesline? What that, wait, hold on. Like, it's just like the moments, like it had a lot of moments and it felt like, it felt like how WrestleMania made you feel like it felt so exciting and that's why i'm just like i'm starting to see where brian's coming from with the the whole like maybe night two is not as bad as it because now i'm thinking about night two and i'm thinking about all the matches that happened and i'm like wow those matches were just as good as night one and the moments were just as good as night one so like maybe i'm i was a little too harsh earlier i'm gonna eat my own words like yeah it this wrestlemania was finally something worth being excited about you know what I mean? Like it was finally 
culminate into what it used to be. And But that's because you had people back there that remember what it used to be and they made it what it used to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was the uh, greatest of all time. Ooh. Ooh. Greatest of all time. Is that an unpopular opinion? <laughs> no, I, man, I, people can't let go of 17. That's why. What was the main event for 17 again? Rock that's Austin 2. Two. That's the Austin heel turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would so, rate it. So does that mean you hmm. rated a 10, Brian? Uh, yeah, 11. 11 out of uh, 10. I rated a 9. <laughs> a nine. No, I gotta go okay. against you, brother. I'm sorry. I mean, you show me a WrestleMania that had like a perfect card, right? Even um well, we can't seven... do that because this is how how many two card WrestleManias have you had versus the one no, but that I'm saying, like make memories. Well, shoot, a lot of them still had 17 matches just in one night. But um sometimes people try to say, okay, like people talk about 17 like it was the greatest thing ever, right? And it was great, yeah. don't get me wrong. But right. we're not gonna act like that um that that six man tag match with the APA didn't happen. We ain't gonna act like Chris Benoit versus Kurt Angle was there. They had their best match, you know. They had some good. But we ain't gonna act like Big Show Raven and um, Kane didn't happen. And then if you, you know, so there's matches that you could say like, okay, it was good, but it wasn't a perfect card. You know, the gimmick battle royal. You know, um, what people should like read is your Ringer article. Thank the you. They should. Um, they should. Forgotten. WrestleMania matches because it was some like I was like oh oh yeah 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 because it's like thirty nine shows great article by the way brother thank you. so thank you for for writing excellent that. piece that thank you thank you I appreciate y'all so, reading it I'm looking at the chat and every I see a couple that say <laughs> eight point five and I think that's where I'm landing for this WrestleMania because. Every every me has their little things here and there that's like that didn't hit for me or this wasn't it. Mm -hmm. For me, the reason why I'm gonna give it 8.5, I'm taking 1.5 off of the 10 because of fucking Shane McMahon. Because oh, come most of y'all no, you can't like that. Come on. I did not. I, I didn't like it either, I but did it did not. what it I see what they were trying to do, but I I didn't like it I, either I, because I, Everybody was so excited, and then when he tripped on his shoelace, I was like, "Oh, this is this is this your man? Are you going to stand beside him?" Hard, like so hard. <laughs> yeah, because I, it was like gotta, so I random. Screaming my so ass I, off that I didn't even notice that. I gotta keep it consistent because I was doing a live stream. Shout out to the True Hill Heat Boys on YouTube because they have your boy on for all of night two. So I'm watching that with the crew live time. I did not like Shane coming out. And then when he tore his quad, I thought he, he tore his knee, Sean Livingston style, first off, because that landing was just like, oh, he just shredded everything in his knee. And then to find out it was a quad later on in the press conference, was like, oh, damn. So he really just pulled off his daddy shit. But it was like grand opening, grand closing. But at the same time, I didn't like it in the moment. I didn't like mm -hmm. it then. And even when I've had time to digest, I was like, there's other people you could have used for that. LA Knight was right fucking there asking for a Mania match. You know Wait, who else you didn't use at WrestleMania? Bobby fucking Lashley, who came out for two minutes, oh, trotted yeah. out his part his participation trophy. That was trophy, the one thing that pissed back. me off. Why did they move stage. that match? Why did they move that match out of WrestleMania? I for what Bobby? No, that wasn't that. Didn't he win the Andre the Giant Memorial? Yeah. So they mm -hmm. why did they move that? that? They did that last year too, and I think it's yeah. Because I don't know why they. Keep I didn't back. like that. There's I did also not like no that. pre show anymore, so that could be why. I think that's yeah, but why. out of all the like, not for not for nothing. Um, there's one match I can, I'm not gonna say the match, but there's one match that Bingo. didn't have to be on that card. There's a Marvel 87 plus the perfect. It's like you could use that for someone else other than Shane. It's like, like and not to mention that, Shane that's left on that real is. bad terms, like that Royal Rumble in St. Louis, he really everyone did. was like. That wasn't good, but he had a lot of hand in that. It's like we you still got a sour taste over that. On top of like the last couple times you pop up, is like it doesn't really hit like he thinks it does. And that moment could have went to like someone else that could have really used it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I um, 
I just gotta stay consistent because I didn't like it then. I was like grand opening, grand closing. Yeah, so no, you're no, you're right. And it was definitely one of those moments that was oh, like a big oh, high, and then it was just like kind of like, oh man. And you know, it, unfortunately, like at Mania, there's a place for that kind of shit. Like sometimes there's gonna be a blow off thing where it's just meant to be, you know, it's a you know a random thing. Uh, I, I do. Like I do that to piss me off. Like I'll never forgive them for making me listen to "I'm Coming Home" for the seventeenth hundred time. That was funny. You know? <laughs> I was cold. I got sick the next day. Mm. I'm like, yo, and then you cut the divas. Okay. I'm sorry. I have to disagree with that. I know everybody has their own opinion about Shane McMahon. I was in that building. That place fucking erupted. Oh yeah, no mm. doubt. No, no, I'm just no. gonna say Kyle's comment. Because the stadium literally lost their mind when his money hit. Like I, that it was one of the <laughs> biggest <laughs> No, uh, and I'm the same mark. <laughs> so. Well, that makes eighty one thousand of y'all because I was like, for fuck's sake. I mean, but that's and I why do, you think he I made that I speech? I up with him. I feel like that's my bro. Yeah, that's why he made that speech. Like, yo, we made him AWs in Long Island. Yeah. yeah. Okay, how did and we know this? We don't care. That's why. <laughs> oh, like, no, oh, yeah, no, we definitely had this conversation, and the conversation was exactly what y'all about to say. Like, it's right after WrestleMania. Why would they bring it to, out of all times? Bring it to Long Island after WrestleMania. People are there. It's MJF Day, isn't it? Oh, get, like, but then then, like, no, he got the key to the city today. My I, my yeah, cousin yeah. had to talk about it. Um, guys, I I gotta agree with this one. Mm. Um, this yeah, actually- go. Because then, because honestly, Bobby Lashley doesn't need that trophy, that fucking I mean, LA Knight does. It means nothing. It means nothing. The they just wanted him to have a W. Nothing. Right. Um, but LA Knight thinking. definitely needs that push. Love, yo, and Damian Sandow was and, fucking hilarious. And LA Knight was over like Rover during that Andre Battle Row in LA. Like LA really liked LA Knight. They was. I was kind of surprised. <laughs> Not surprised, <laughs> but you know, when you when someone's still kind of like new and you don't really know how over they are and then you're in a crowd and you're like, oh shit, they're over. Mm-hmm. LA Knight is one of those people. Hindsight being 2020, you could have did LA Knight winning and then Bobby Lashley having that challenge then. Look, mm. I want to rest. Give me the match with him because I want to beat somebody up because I'm pissed off. Mm. That's you know. a good one right there. Oh, what about the what about Gunther or LA Knight for oh, you know what? Hmm. It's Listen, if Otis can win money in the bank, I don't see why LA Knight can't have it either. And that be his development I angle. I would, I would, I think LA Knight, because the thing is, the money in the bank carrier has to be someone that's going to entertain us with it. You don't which think is he's why I like heels carry it because heels could just be like little jerks and talk about it all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's what made Carmella so good was because she talked shit for almost a year. Me, I think was it? Did she make it? Yo, year? Dolph Ziggler will forever hold my heart for carrying that beat up blue suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> just to be like, oh, it's the Monday after all. Okay, take this shit with you. I'm in. <laughs> like, you will forever hold the place in my heart for doing that. Because you're right. They do have to be like somewhat of a nuisance. The Miz mm-hmm. was the first Funny, one. Funny, you know. Um, and then Gunther, as maybe this is an unpopular opinion, I feel like he's so above that briefcase. Like, he's he doesn't, he's oh, can you see like carrying that? I mean, maybe one of his little you know, people maybe. Hey, he just it. seems very like, you know, I don't know. Here's the thing. Y'all just be prepared for whoever has the ring in the bank briefcase right. to cash in on the United States or the Intercontinental Championship. Ah, mm, uh, right. yeah. 1,000%. Yeah, like... I'm catch yeah. my tribal chief slipping. <laughs> they, nobody, I'm telling unless, you, no one's that stupid. And I don't you like know? to do this. But unless it's a part of the bloodline finally turning on Roman. And that's where I was going to go with mine because and then to answer Dylan's question enough was... for somebody to cash in on him. They are going to be in London. They're going to want to show out just like they did in Clash at the Castle. Like that was a huge show. That was a huge turning point for a lot of things. And nobody expected it to be. Like Dom piggy... turned on Ray. Yeah. Mm. And then the piggyback off this of his point. And then to piggyback off uh, P's point, it depends on who's in the money in the bank match. Because if Expect you look at, for Solo to be the one to go for those belts. And he, and Solo! 
<laughs> and here's and here's where I'm gonna go with this because if you look at two of the last three years where you had Miz take that briefcase off of remember Otis used to have the briefcase during that pandemic before <laughs> Miz got that off of him and right. became champion and then you look at the way that Austin Theory unceremoniously <laughs> lost his briefcase <laughs> a couple months ago whoever mm-hmm. gets his briefcase they're gonna want to win this damn title because that's two out of like the last three that there's been unsuccessful cash in. So you're right. probably going to have Cody Rhodes in this match. You're probably going to have Bloodline-related story in that. So that means maybe Jey Uso gets involved in this. Maybe Solo Sokoa gets involved in this. And whoever holds that briefcase is going to hold it for a while because you're still going to have to answer that Roman question. Whether it's no. th- can, I, can I ask no. an honest question? They're going after the mid-card titles. So yeah, but well, can Solo I ask an honest question? <laughs> remember, they get to hold that briefcase for a for year. So that could go no, past no. WrestleMania where they still hold that briefcase. Yeah, so you just guarantee it that the tribal chief is going to lose in Philly? That's not a guarantee. It's not well, a guarantee. Not guaranteeing that, he, said, but he dares I, somebody to take it from him. He wants I'm, somebody to. they only in the third inning. All I'm saying is we don't know who's going to be a part of that match, so it's hard for me to look at it and be like, this is going to be an unsuccessful cash in. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Everybody's like, going to be mad when Roman holds the title next year. <laughs> we, we shall see. That's something that I am looking forward to because, like P perfectly put, they will be in London. They treat mm-hmm. Money in the Bank just as big as Royal Rumble, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, and stuff like that. Roman's probably going to defend that title in London. <laughs> It's at the O2 Arena, y'all. They not not I my, my language. I've been in the O2. They ain't fucking around. Oh, that uh, I've been in the O2. I was in the O2. This was 2000. This was 2010. This okay. was 2010. My first time in. Yo, you think y'all think SoFi was loud? Mm-hmm. You got a bunch of British people who spend thousands of dollars to come here. And watch WrestleMania, and now you're telling them like, "Hey, oh, by the way, we're gonna um put one of the most highly anticipated ladder matches in the history of title changes in your hometown, the O2 Arena." And you know those crowds. If I don't hear that, it's it. like, yo, y'all are they're lucky. That's all I have to say. They are so lucky. Like lucky is it's mildly putting it. Like luck's for mm. losers. They're blessed because that's going to be one that's especially with Roman Reigns being the champion and you guys are talking about it. I definitely think it's going to be more of a mid card situation. Mm -hmm. You don't know where this is going to go and the momentum in there is going to be crazy. I'm telling you who's going to win it solo. That may be one of the most anticipated money in the bank. And he's going to cash in on Gunther. But this is what I'm thinking, too. A lot of people are saying, oh, Jay should get it just to get it. I feel like, in my opinion, I'm just so hung on. Listen, I was right about baby, baby like, Steiner going bad bomb breaker, and he did on Tuesday because y'all saw it, so I was right. But I also needed (laughs) – we said that. Yeah, we. you and I were on the same page with that. But also, Mm -hmm. I can't help but think that, especially with Heyman lying to them this past Monday – the crack is really there. I don't think the Usos are going to sit there for long and let Roman be at the the, the chief, the tribal chief. I think they're going to try and screw him. I don't know how that reaction is going to go, but if no. it's not that, no, I think no. I, I no. yeah, no, I don't. I'm sorry, you don't want to hear it, but guess what? Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Look, everybody eats because they're not giving tag team titles it. back anytime soon. Why Let's not? be real, they're not. Why they're not. not? They're not. They're not. Yeah, I think I they're think not. I, I think, think that's done. And, and Sammy about to take those belts and and do do a lot of good goodness with them. Not saying the Usos wasn't, but I don't think that's in the Usos future right now. And honestly, the Usos need a break. I don't know who I was talking mm-hmm. to recently, but I was like, the Usos are the hardest working people on that roster. They work every single show and they deliver like it's. You know, when Roman's not there, they're still there. A hundred percent. They drive the storyline. They're the ones that do everything. They go to every house show, like, and they love it. Yo, what if they tell Roman straight up, like, look, man, you ain't gonna keep talking to us like this. We've been doing your dirty work, so we're gonna go sit at home. We're gonna go chill with our families while you still putting food on the table. Since you the head of the table, we're gonna take, we're gonna cash in on our vacation. Yep. 
that actually and be cool. And then it's all up the solo. <laughs> you, there's a lot that can happen between now and money in the bank. That's what I was saying. Like that money, that man's money in the bank ladder match, that might be the most anticipated in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So because I feel like with the women, I feel like with the women's, it's kind of like that's gonna be fair game. Like, I don't know who else could I would possibly like to see her hold it though. Who? I would like to see the woman, whoever, whichever woman hold, actually hold, hold on to it, home. right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a, more of a Cinderella story. story. Ends, some shit is whack. I like them um, depending. I like this for Liv Morgan. Yeah, I like this for Liv Morgan. Yeah, I like it doesn't need to happen live. every every year. Yeah, that's I like this for Liv. Liv and yeah. Bailey, I feel like the only two that like kind of made sense. Yeah. Oh, you else think Alexis? Like, why? No. And then you also have to keep in mind. Well, remember, you have to remember, I got back into wrestling in 2017 when Carmelo won the won the briefcase. It was the first one, so yes. uh, my expectations of like what that run could be like was there, and then and for everyone it to be like the same night was kind of disappointing. It's like, mm. oh, like okay, and then if the men are doing. The, I don't know. I just feel like it's good storytelling for the women. Like if we're already struggling with storytelling with them, have you know? I, I get what you're saying. Whatever. Yeah. No, I get. Especially what you're when you look at it from a totality of like, we've had at least five women money the bank holders. Carmel's the only one to hold it longer than 24 hours. Mm. No, Oscar. Mm. Oscar, yeah. As no, 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 Oscar, Oscar got the title the next night. Got the title, like Oscar got the title even, the next I night. I was excited was, for Oscar. That was Oscar went into Braille, and then uh, the next night on Raw, Becky came out and said, "This wasn't for the Money in the Bank briefcase. This is for the title. I'm going away. I'm pregnant." Yeah, well, you ain't want her cashing in, Justin, did you? No, but the but you talk about. <laughs> I'm messing so with you. I'm messing with you. No, no, no. Would it have but, been? And then answer your question Oscar. because you're like, did you like Alexa? This is cash. And I was like, no, because you just had Alexa come off of two super long title reigns, mm-hmm. and it was like almost uh, by that point. I was so it's more so you didn't want her to have the, the title it's like, anyway. Yeah, it's like she just had it for like nine months, and now okay, the Nia Jack stuff wasn't working, Rhonda wasn't ready yet. There are other choices you could have went with that money to bank holder, especially when people really, really wanted Becky to have that. But they were like, nah, we're gonna get that to Alexa, Ooh. we're gonna have her cash in, and we're gonna set up Alexa and Rhonda at SummerSlam. But it's like, but Alexa's been champion for over a year and a half. I'm almost like done with this, and now you're like. Oh, too bad. Here you go. And I was like, mm-hmm. well, fuck you then. <laughs> no, I did not like that. I was like, Becky was right there. Chicago wanted it so bad. Everyone wanted it so Ooh, bad. It was just like, oh, okay. I love Jesus. this. I love this. Uh, I think actually this could be a perfect way to put Shana back in the spotlight. Oh, th- she can be like super menacing. She can even be like a and she's she's also hilarious in like real life. Um, but I would love that. Real quick, what did Aaron did you guys get a chance to watch Stand and Deliver? Yes, I did. a little bit of it. I watched um Carmelo's match. I love the finish. Yeah, same. I couldn't get um uh, I was working most of the morning, so the women did their thing, and I'm very happy that Indy Harwell. I was gonna say, was you surprised? Oh uh, well, I guess we segue. Mm-hmm. Do we segue? Segue. To, we segue? We segue. Yes. Let's do it. All it's right. Time. <laughs> now I only have the NXT scorecard because I felt like we were gonna go into the other matches so much that it's mm-hmm. kind of like a giveaway of how I was gonna rate those matches. All those matches to me. Dare I say it? I don't know how Brian's gonna feel about this, but they're all fives. Like they all. For what um, WrestleMania? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't have a problem with any of those matches. They did what they were supposed to do. Mm. But with the, they, I know you going to disagree with me. It's okay. No, I actually but, agree. That's um... right. They were all they were all fives because they all did what they were supposed to do. Rhea and for me to give anything, first of all, take that down. I'm gonna talk to the camera for one second. Okay. For me to give Rhea, Ooh. y'all think I was gonna let, give let, Rhea let, and let's Charlotte? Let Let's let her talk yeah. to the camera. Yeah, can, can we do that? I, I, I got an SEP. I, I got an SEP. Pro- producer, okay. do I have your... Okay. <laughs> For y'all to Ooh. think that I was going to rate not one, not two, but six matches and think I was going to give <laughs> any of those matches less than, you don't lost your mind. Because 
<laughs> Charlotte and Rhea, I've been waiting for it for two years. So that was going to be a five. Bianca, you have Bianca, Oscar. I already know Bianca, she's going to be number one for a very long time. You have Asuka, who's Kana and Asuka fusing together like, you know, Spider-Man and Venom. So you knew I wasn't going to not give that a five. The women's showcase, I ain't going to shit on them because you put all the best talented women in the ring together to have a showcase. Like, mm. Side eye, boom, bostic side eye. For anybody who thought that I was going to rate <laughs> any of it less than a five, criminal, criminal offensive side eye, criminal offensive side eye for nobody who mentioned how great also the NXT women's matches were. So now you could take me off. We're going to go right back to the scorecard. Yes. As y'all all know, What's the criteria. Oh, what's, what's, what's my cry? We're talking about long, match long. New now, see now, <laughs> y'all done got me so riled up. I don't even know how to say longevity. Match longevity, longevity. <laughs> chemistry, wrestling ability, and storyline buildup. Now, I forgot to rate the NXT Women's Champion. Did I rate the NXT Women's Champion? I want to start with that because I felt like I think I mentioned to you guys before that you kind of had two of the darkest people fighting against each other the last time I saw Abba, um, Abba Dawn and Abba Frey kind of have the ta have the um tag team champions. They had them one-on-one. -on -one. And I felt like in my head, I was like, why aren't they a tag team? I feel like gimmick-wise, fire-wise, darkness-wise, they would make the perfect tag team. And they did just that. Because even with um Haley and kind of, they already had their cracks in their foundation because Kanye always wants to cheat. You know, she's a cheater. She, that's how she won the championship. She grabbed that goddamn bag and whatever's in there, she gonna get it. Like, mm -hmm. she always, always wants to cheat. And this is the one time when they're like, no, you're not cheating. And you saw that kind of division amongst them going into the match. You kind of could tell they weren't going to hold on to it for long. But then you also saw little previews of, I don't want to lose. You don't want to lose either. I'm going to have your back. You're going to have mine. But also, we need to fight for this belt together. And the, the amount of energy in that match, I was just like, for the first time, I was like, yo, this is really like, this is the future of the tag team division at NXT for women. And they, like, if they would just give that energy to the main roster, everything will work out the way it's supposed to work out. And of course you got crowned brand new tag team champions. I feel like their segment, even their segment this Tuesday to me was very captivating. Cause I'm just like, yo, this is going to work. This is going to work very well because I seem, I feel like they're not in NXT. There's no random tag team. Like even when you have, even what you have with, uh, Kaden and K K mm, why am I having so much word vomit? Sorry. Kaden even when you have, yeah, like they're friends chemistry. Mm. Like the only mm -hmm. odd team that was there with the temp with the tag teams, they took those belts off of, but even they worked chemistry wise. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want to go into that ladder match, First of all, I knew in my, my in my heart, and it's sad to say this, as much as I like to boost, boost Roxanne Perez, I knew she wasn't gonna win for so many other reasons. It's okay. And 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 that's what I mean, that's what a lot of people said. They're like, I, they, we didn't expect for her to win either. But for the reason of she's very much a I can prove that I can climb this mountain no matter what. Like you can knock, and she was knocked back down the mountain when she passed out. But y'all say that she's like the whole Shawn Michael, I lost my smile incarnation. I want to see where <laughs> it goes with her without the belt because I feel like that's where it's going to go. Like the prodigy, like everybody, and I mean everybody has put this girl up on a pedestal. And y'all could disagree with me or not. Like Booker's put her on a pedestal because he knows her. Shawn Michaels put her on a pedestal because she knows her. She calls herself the prodigy because that's what they call her. Like, but what happens when you get knocked down off that pedestal? We saw her laughing. Mm -hmm. We saw her smiling. And, you know, I like how in my mind, I honestly thought this is going to go to Tiffany Strat. And I was waiting for like, I just had Tiffany epiphany. Like, she's <laughs> like, I, I like her. I like her gimmick. It was in LA. Like between, it was between for me, it was between her and Zoe Stark. I felt like it was going to be Zoe Stark's moment. I felt like with Lyra Valkyrie is a little too early. Give her a little bit, like, Justin would say, let her cook a little bit. She needed a little bit more cooking. Indy Hartwell, I feel like if she had lost this time, 
she would have gotten her chance back at um she would have gotten her chance back later on the road. But the fact that Dexter Lewis, when he slid his ass underneath her, I said, Oh Lord, she won this match. I said, finally. When he slid Hello. under there and she he helped her to the top. I was like, no, he did not come back from jail and going missing to help his wife. I say, yo, really? Yes, watch it. I gotta, I got to. I, yo, I told when you. I tell you, I was sitting. I'm sitting there, mind you, I'm, I'm like, I'm sitting there with my niece, and my mm -hmm. niece is looking at the TV, and she's like. TT person, and I'm like, who is she talking about? Person, like, and I see Destin Lumis going like this under the ladder, and I'm like, no, he ain't here to win help but win this goddamn title. And then she looked just shook. She looks like the one thing I could credit Indy Hartwell, like she got a heart of gold. Like Index was was there for one night. Yeah. In Index, I really enjoyed that, and I think was we're, we're not bringing that back. They need to bring it back, and then I like, and and I like. Indy Hartwell is going to be, I feel like she's going to be such a good fighting champion because she, if y'all don't realize, like, she came in, she can't, yes, she came in at a, at a fold where all the people that were with her are not on, on the NXT roster anymore. I think mm -hmm. the last of the people that were on that main right. roster with her, if I'm not mistaken, is it LA Knight? LA Knight was the last to go to main roster and it was just her. Mm. So she right. deserves. If you're gonna, if you're gonna send her off, if you, the yeah. the fact that I saw her in the Royal Rumble, I was like, oh, thank God, because if they so if they cool. got the nerve to put Roxanne Perez and Zoe Stark, give her a shot. She'll do it. So she's the last of the Mohegans. She's a locker room veteran there. Totally well deserved. You saw Cora J come back. I knew that was going to happen because it's like, yeah, and Cora J didn't sit through nothing WrestleMania when she had the one of the best performances last year at Stand Deliver, and she wasn't at Stand Deliver at all. Something's mm -hmm. not right in the state of Denmark. So I gave the was women's match a four point seven. At last year's Stand and Deliver, she, huh? Which did she have her heel turn yet at that time? Or no, was she, she was still <laughs> face at that Stand and Deliver. Okay, she came in with like a skateboard crew. I thought that was pretty dope, yeah, but. Remember. She like did like to see where that's going. I, this is gonna be the indie Hartwell that's like she's always said, you know what, I deserve it, and I feel like I'm being looked over, and now she's finally having the belt, and it's gonna be like, well, I'm gonna give you a reason why you should have never looked me over, but you're gonna still give me your hardest hitters. Right. Like, imagine the match, like Zoe Stark is gonna try and rip that from her arms, and I can't wait to see that type of match. Yeah. So it's a lot of buildup with Indy Hart. It's a lot that can go around Indy Hart well creatively, but I just feel like, yo, NXT, the the fact that y'all put that before WrestleMania is the pre-show, and it's one of the best pre-shows. Not even the women's matches. Oh, that wow. freaking five-person tag match. No, that first five-person for the uh, North American. What? That was nuts. That's a really what? good point that you made, Sandal. Because I def the last question I want to ask you guys um, before we spotlight our women of the week. Um, I think it was Andreas Hale that tweeted it, and he says that NXT Stand and Deliver should switch places with the Hall of Fame. That was Flobo. Flobo. Flobo, yeah. Flobo oh Boys. So I wanted to ask you guys what you thought about that because I selfishly would love for that to happen because there's no way in hell I'm ever making a 10 a.m. NXT show. Yeah, I, yeah, like if I'm in the city working and shit. Like it's just as you know, it just hasn't had it hasn't happened yet. But, I didn't realize that it was at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, because of the it was time earlier zone. because the, the kickoff started at nine and then the first kickoff match was 9 30. So people right. were in that building like as early as like 8, 8, 30. Well, that's why I say the strategic of Philly being next year's WrestleMania comes to play. Because I explained to y'all, the baseball stadium's right here. Eagle Stadium's right here. Wells mm -hmm. Fargo's right there. And Xfinity lies right there. Who's going anywhere? When right. you tired, when you done with NXT, you go across the street, get you a beer, and come right back to the stadium. That's the strategic of it all. So... My heart goes out to anybody who had to wake up at 10 o'clock and go to, to arena just to end up back all the way to Inglewood. For I, my heart goes out to you. It wasn't. That's a, like that. It wasn't. 
my heart still the fact that you have to wake up at 10 o'clock in the morning my heart goes out to you well i was but, up there, but it was, i mean you when i don't know maybe because my body was still on east coast time so right. i was waking up at like four in the morning every day five <laughs> in the morning thinking it's like seven or eight so i was good yeah Same. but like that whole that whole card even that that from the unsanctioned match with grace with waller and johnny mm -hmm. wrestling to and it, people forget that the rock's daughter wrestled in that skims in that um skims versus chase U match mm -hmm. that whole card is a pre-show like it's it's not even a pre we're done with pre-shows after seeing something like that in day one right and that was amazing that and shout out to NXT as a whole because ever since they went back outside for their premium live events, they're now two for two because the last one in Charlotte was really, oh, really good. fucking good. And they built off of this, and this was another fantastic one. The oh, next really? one is in Massachusetts outside of Boston. Hmm. Ooh, that should be really, Ooh, really good. Road trip? Yeah, we may have to road trip that one. Yeah, we always <laughs> like the, Am the oh, Amtrak only costs like $30. <laughs> <laughs> I would love so my goal is to travel to go to like different shows. I would love I've I've only been to one NXT show. And Melo is your NXT champion. I mean I have to yeah. go to Melo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that may be a road trip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um I'll provide the gas money. But I think it was P that brought it up, like or Brian, where it's like, so if we flip-flop NXT back to Friday. It takes me back to WrestleMania 35 where they actually made that decision because mm -hmm. of G1 Supercard and Triple H didn't want yep. to compete NXT TakeOver versus G1 Supercard, especially at that point, Kenny and the Bucks hadn't made the decision to go over to and help start up AEW where they were a mm. realistic possibility of being on that Supercard and allegedly had they not left, they, that would have headlined with Okada Omega 4. Like that's where we would have gotten that. That but, was that Madison Square Garden too, right? Yeah. Yes, it was. That was the first like yeah. first non I think of the first non WWE show. Yeah. But yeah. it's still it, in the garden. Yeah. But, but shout it's out to Trish because he saw it and was like, you know what? We I don't want to have this compete, especially where fans right. were really fucking pumped for G1 Supercard. Let's because the buzz was there. Oh, incredibly. So they're like, let's do takeover New York Friday night. We'll do the Hall of Fame Saturday. I think that's honestly better. And Especially where, like, I love SmackDown. I love what they're doing with SmackDown for this go-home show where they're making it something, even though Raw's has been lacking SmackDown. They try to put on the Andre. Last year, we got Ricochet defending the IC title. Uh, um, yeah, the IC title. He was IC champion. Yeah. So Ricochet defending his title because he wasn't going to be on WrestleMania. You have Finn Balor defending his US title because he wasn't going to be on WrestleMania. Which and that didn't make that any sense. Go home, smack down something. Mm -hmm. But if you circumvent that with like an NXT takeover and that really starts off your mania mm -hmm. weekend, that's like it goes back to the old school black and gold where like before you got mania, you got NXT. I agree. And also having it during the day, you're competing with all the indie shows that book during the day because they don't want to compete with mania so now nxt is literally like you're like i had seen people choose other indie shows as opposed to nxt yeah that you know is kind of crazy and hall of fame doesn't give i don't know also it's hard because also hall of fame is their night out it's their night it's kind of like their like holiday party where they all get dressed mm -hmm. up so it kind of would be weird to have it during the day but i don't know something about you know, because I would have loved to have gone to San and Deliver. I had every intention, but it's hard that it's just like it's a long it's, ass day. Yeah, you know? yeah, because you're starting at ten. You're starting at ten a.m. with an NXT show. And then you also have to now because WrestleMania was early. What time did you guys have to be at the stadium? We got there like around four. Yeah, so literally you're having brunch and then you're going straight to the stadium. Right. That's long. And God forbid you want to go to the Superstore. You want to go to... Right. Mm -hmm. You want to go to Effie's. You know, it's just like, it's just so and much. I had to work that morning too. So. Right. Um, and that's oh, the, the thing. Is like, podcast, that was cool. 
it was and it wasn't just that. You saw a lot of ringer guys doing the kickoff show. You saw Kaz and um, yeah, shout out. I thought Davis Maker. I was you like, had okay. Shoemaker. You had Denise Al- <laughs> you had Denise Alcedo doing the NXT uh pre show. So they were there like like I said, eight, eight thirty. You had the rest yeah, of seven where they, they were there at seven too. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta get made up and stuff. Oh wow, wow. Yeah. But um guys, I think this was definitely one of my favorite fan clubs to date. I love the I'm coming in with opinions from other wrestling unpopular, popular, but you know, it's everything is an opinion. So I think this was really fun. And and everyone in the comments, I want to thank you guys. You guys really make fans Time for the spotlight. Good shout out real quick though to Dylan because Dylan is our friend from across is the water. True, he was up at 3 a.m. Guys, 3 a.m. Correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong, Dylan. He was up at 3 a.m. That's Dylan's, not a Dylan's super fan. Oh, yeah, that's Dylan, insane. you you, you beat us all, like, baby. Like yeah. you beat you beat me in my 12 o'clock home over from Friday night we work party <laughs> as I was like Mercedes Monet. Yeah, 3 a.m. for stand deliver. Stand deliver. Yeah, you you the true MVP. Also, thank you for always tuning in. You're a loyal member of the fan club, and you always have the gifts ready for us. We appreciate. We it. love <laughs> them gifts. They mm-hmm. really make my day. More. Sure. We love please. gifts over here. <laughs> we love gifts over here. Love oh my gifts. goodness. <laughs> Ready for the spotlight? Um, yeah, let's yeah, spotlight who, our who, woman who, who of the week. Oh, she's fucking gorgeous. Mm -hmm. She's fucking gorgeous. So Siendo wanted us to, to, to feature her. So why don't you take it away? People, I rated a match a couple of days. I rated a match a couple of months ago between this wonderful young lady and Deanna Peraza. And I gave it where credit was due, and but I didn't go into the highlight. I said that Giselle Shaw was the one of the most exceptional indie talents we have out here today. But just look at this career highlight: Ken Valley Wrestling Women's Champion, Fierce Female Champion, Progress Women's Champion, Rev Pro Undisputed British Women's Champion, E Tag Championship, um, Crossfire, Iron Fist. Pro wrestling eclipse. She's been the Ring of Honor tag team champion. The list goes on and on and on. She gives you par hitting clotheslines and grapple styles mis- mixed with a bit of sass and spawns Hain. I've been fascinated with her ever since I started watching her in progress. And for me, for us to know we know about her now just makes her one of the most exceptional, if not one of the best indie talents out to date. And unfortunately, despite everything that happened with her in the center of controversy, she unfortunately had to endure um, someone who was very ignorant towards her. I'm choosing not to give her those flowers based on that, but to give her those flowers just to remind y'all that it does not matter. It really does not matter who you are, where you're from, where you're with, you are, everybody is special and exceptional in their own way. She is special and exceptional. I'm giving her the flowers based on the fact that when I first heard about her, I had no idea all these uh, wonderful accomplishments, all the rave reviews you've heard from the support y'all see. If y'all go to her page, she put it, she bravely put the story out and the amount of outpour and support she has people in her own corner in her own industry it just shows you it's not based on just character it's based on talent it's based on respect we respect each other respect they respect each other indies it's not it's not the boys club no more in wrestling i I hate to break it to you those who think that it still is it's not there's a lot more there's there's no space for intolerance anymore. I'm not going to definitely tolerate anybody spitting on Giselle Shaw's name going forward. She's not my person to watch for the year. Um, Giselle, my flowers, and I bow down to you, girl, because nobody should ever deal with what they had to deal with this weekend. And by looking at this, like, if anything, you've accomplished way more, way more, way more credit where it's due. And you deserve it all. So... That's why I wanted to spotlight her today. Yeah. Shout out to you, y'all. Hello. We love putting a spotlight on women on the indies every week. Um, Giselle Shaw was a uh, Giselle Shaw. 
sorry, I've been talking a lot for the past week. Giselle <laughs> Shaw is amazing, and I cannot wait to come. And, and her career really just started, so I'm excited to see how an impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, um, an impact. But um, I want to thank everybody for joining us for TWG Fan Club. I think we're definitely going to make unpopular opinions a thing. Um, more so, um, I already think I know which question I want to, I want to assign everyone for next week, (laughs) but I'm just going to post it on our Twitter account and just kind of let y'all go off on it. Um, but yeah, I think fan club is definitely going to take more of an interactive spin the way it was tonight. I think tonight was definitely one of the best fan clubs and we welcome everyone that's new to the wrestling fan club all of our loyal members like dylan and rakarsha and black thoughts and um you know i um, love seeing like vaughn and kyle coming in he's fan he's new york family um but yeah everyone but um thank you guys where can everybody find you my crew well, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at It's Justin Rich. You can find me here Wednesday nights from 7 to 9 p.m. with those wrestling girls fan club with these three beautiful, intelligent, amazing people that I get to blessing and opportunity to co-host and learn from. You can catch me from time to time on June on um, Turbicle Talk Tuesday nights with Mimi and Corey on Twitter spaces around 6:35 where we talk all things wrestling. You can catch me from time to time on True Heel Heat Sports. And True Hill Heat Wrestling, both those channels are on YouTube. Your boy got to cover night one of the and it was so kickoff good. show <laughs> and all oh, of yeah. night two of WrestleMania. So good. Six plus hours of me and the crew just talking all things night two, watch along. And also we had a healthy debate about the finish to Roman Reigns and Cody Rose that y'all can go pull up on YouTube. We here, yeah. we outside. Be active. The goat, yeah. Mercedes Monet, uh, wrestles this. Week. The goat wrestles this weekend. Shout out to Mercedes Monet and a triple threat at Sakura Genesis. Ooh, I will yeah. definitely try to watch that. And um, we are very happy that we got you through your shift. You can catch us here every Wednesday from seven to nine ish p.m. Eastern. We will definitely keep you up and keep you entertained for sure. Uh oh, the AEW announcements coming. Oh boy. Which I think it is. I don't care. Five years ago. What happened? Sunday, August 27th. All in. Did he say London? London, England. August 27th. Hey, Yo, that's the first international <laughs> show. Wow. That's how you wow. spend your daddy's money, Tony. Let's up, go. <laughs> I appreciate that heads up. Damn, Damn everybody want to go to London. Damn. Mm-hmm. I'm in London. I like to go and shop at the London. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's. Like Anyone want to sponsor um, the TWG fan club and those wrestling girls? Nah, fuck that sponsorship. My toes will be back on Instagram at 12.09 a.m. As soon as I paint this chipped one over, we will be selling feet pics because, child, <laughs> that going to be enough because, uh, child. Oh, when they're at the Wembley? They're at Wembley Stadium? The home of the greatest what? SummerSlam match. I don't know. WWE in, in the O2. AEW yeah. and Wimbledon and Wimbledon. Wow, Wembley, yo. Wimbledon. Wimbley, whatever. I'm tongue tied. I've been talking too long. See, I know lost <laughs> me, but talking about toes. I've been talking too long. <laughs> all right. Um, so y'all can catch me at Brian H. Waters on all social media platforms. Make sure you uh uh let's see what work you can check out this week. Uh tonight at 10 30 p.m. Eastern time, you can check out the Wrestling Round Now podcast. Will be myself. The real Dwayne Allen and brother Brandon, the guy. Guy. Also, make sure you check out his show coming up, the uh, championship show. Get an education on championship belts. Make sure you check out my article in the Ringer, as Queen PR announced earlier. Uh, the Ringer.com. Just search my name. I got a bio page, y'all. So, all the episodes of Wednesday Worldwide, a couple episodes of Mass Man that I appeared on as a host, and my article will be right there uh, where I. 
give you 10 WrestleMania matches you may have forgotten about. Also, go on the Ringer. There's a Spotify playlist of over 15 hours of content that we produced last week at WrestleMania, including my interview with Drew McIntyre. And anything else, just search Brian H. Waters. I promise you'll find it if I want you to. Oh. <laughs> Out of the other part. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, it is your honorary wrestling girl, Sienna B. You can check me out on Instagram at reload.relive. You can also catch me talking a lot of crap on Twitter at reload be a film. You can also catch the well minority on all social at the end of the well minority. Um, you can catch me here every Wednesday with the three best friends that well, y'all not even best friends anymore. Y'all are family. Like the three best family well, extended sing cousins. Dance, well, okay, I'll sing it for it. y'all. This is the three best friends that anybody can have every <laughs> Wednesday night at seven o'clock sharp on Twitch. You can also catch me this week. We are definitely going to be doing the big four, the after WrestleMania show this Yay! Friday with truly yours from Miss Mimi. The wrestling chick from Black Wrestling Podcast. You can also catch it. with Janelle HR from Jobbers Tears, which will be on the Jobbers Tears channel network. And also, this shout out, I normally like to put in a little quick qualm, but I just have to say, as someone who did have to stay behind on all the festivities from LA, I am nothing but proud. And I can honestly say, humbly proud of these two people you see above you. The work, when I tell you, when you see, is nothing like watching, like, it's like mechanics when they get to see the car where it was and put the parts in and, and buy the parts and working with their grime in their hands and get it dirty and to finally turn on that engine and hear it roar. That's what I felt like. I felt like I watched two mechanics work on their cars and they had some troubles. They had a lot of missteps they've had so much hills again but the, to see one of them interviewing people at wrestlemania and the other one finally re, the other one same thing do live out his dream l both live out their dreams i am nothing more than proud to call these two people my friends i am nothing more even more proud to call these two very professional people the next people to look out for like i always tell them both like y'all not competing with not a motherfucking person not one motherfucking person because they're both two amazing individuals and i to see everything i saw this weekend it was like <sighs> and we be and we be giving them their flowers in the group chat and individual texts so you just you guys are just seeing what we talk to y'all just seeing what we be talking about like the entire time so see y'all finally proud. interviewing charlotte to be in the press room, to see Brian sitting on the stage with Drew McIntyre, like all of it, all of it. Even seeing y'all like network and have fun the way y'all did at Wally Mania, all of it was just like, this is this is to, to people, even with Krista, and shout out to my sister Krista, even with her, to people mm -hmm. that deserve it the most. I was nothing but happy for you guys, and I'm so proud of you guys. Like y'all have no you. idea. And, and I'm just I, thankful I that we get to learn from you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I we I I personally love working with you guys, and, and the whole time we were like, next year, Sienna and Justin, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's definitely something oh, where it's like we're all going as well. And I just also want to thank, like, thank you, Vaughn, and thank you to everyone that showed us love on social mm -hmm. media and everything, and everyone that was out there doing anything. Um, really proud of everyone that was out there. Um, you know, people talk. But all I'm going to say is I'm really glad um, that we do have love and support from people because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people worked hard to, to be where they were. And it was nice to share mm -hmm. that and see so many familiar faces in these spaces where we didn't even think we would ever be. So mm -hmm. Man, give, a sh give a shout out to the executive producer because she, she ain't going to accept these flowers, but... <laughs> You know, you're gonna set them today. You gonna we're, learn today. When, Here, you are gonna accept them today? Damn it! <laughs> you got the damn flowers. When, 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 flowers. Right. And I, and I got water for those flowers. You know, we got a chance to link up. <laughs> when, when we got the chances to link up, you know, it was a lot of like just uh vision, a lot of vision. 
and I'm excited to see where it goes, especially, you know, we get to sit here on fan club, but you're talking about somebody who thinks about the fan club and those wrestling girls brand and everything that goes under 24 seven. Like I'm sitting there. I've never seen somebody work so hard at WrestleMania. I'm like, yo, yo, your phone, your phone about to die. Tweet, 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 tweet. It's, um, the hard work is paying off and it's a beautiful thing to see. Thank you. Thank you guys. I love you guys. That anybody can have. No, because now I'm feeling really shy. Um, Make no mistake though, Philly's mine, okay? Philly's mine. Philly, y'all motherfuckers are not right for us because not we may have been we're gonna be DX up in this bitch, okay? Bitch, that that's gonna be the ultimate payoff, but we got a lot of work to do. We do. Before. We do. Y'all do. thought we worked hard last year. I mean, you think about it. WrestleMania before just got started, and then before you know it, we was at Invictus. Then we was at BWF, and so much more. So we got a long way to go. So Ooh, all I'm gonna say whatever. is, oh my God. whatever it takes, y'all just 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 see if y'all can keep up. I got my running shoes on. Let's go. I ain't dropping my mic because uh, all her I'm just before you, brother. Bam. All her. All her. No um, but yeah, yeah. Did everybody <laughs> give their everybody gave their shits, right? Yep. Uh, okay. Now it's your turn. Oh, everybody knows where to find also, me. Come I'm come sorry. Wednesday for the fan club. The so, new boo. Oh, this is my new boyfriend. Oh my god. You guys, his name is Spielberg. The reason why I'm introducing y'all to Steven Spielberg is that because now that um him and I are consummated the marriage, you will be seeing YouTube (laughs) videos from yours truly, and also you might end up seeing them on those wrestling girls because Spielberg and I have plans and we plan on making them happen. I'm gonna make this an audio episode just so that everyone can be (laughs) so confused by everything you just said. And just know it's her camera, her beautiful new camera. And just know <laughs> while PR Not sponsored and, by Ryan yeah. and Krista were in LA working and doing WrestleMania, your boy was writing down everything he wants to accomplish by this time next year. Because y'all gonna hear from all of us. I we ain't love fucking around. That. That's the type of shit that fuels my soul. Mm-hmm. Just like let's make this shit happen. The greatest wrestler. Is taunting Adam Page, and I love it. Thank you, King. Thank you, Vaughn, for mm-hmm. catching on. Thank you, Vaughn, for catching on. He got it. So well, I wrote. I had a blog about you, Sandal, and I don't even know how long ago it was. And I, I had described that. you <laughs> finding a new love or something, and it was a new camera. <laughs> speaking things I into existence. What we you doing? speaking of things into existence for me. <laughs> What right? are we doing on the oh, show? What are we doing on the show? Manifesting. Manifesting. Yes. Oh, by the way, Dylan, this is the ESO M200. Oh, Fickle is back. Oh, he yes. is? Yes. He, he's got that, that aura. He's not saying Fickle, but he got the ponytail. Ah, oh, yes. 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 That's my favorite version of him. Captain Planet. Yeah, no. Brian's hero. <laughs> Gonna <laughs> take this championship down to zero. <laughs> Let's go. Yo, that was the first thing that you played. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> we here now. We here. We just boom. Telepathy. Let's just go home. <laughs> yeah. If I had to be stuck in the club with a bunch of weirdos, I'm proud to say y'all my weirdos because y'all get at me. Like I this is shit that I think <laughs> of. And if I said out loud to other people, they'd be looking at me like, girl, you okay? <laughs> y'all don't. So I love y'all for that. Thank Never. you. That, it, everyone's accepted in the fan club. Like every, and even when we do unpopular opinions, we do it with respect. There's yeah. no disrespect, brain fix your face. No, he's putting no, a he's, screwdriver. He's putting a screwdriver in um in, what in Adam Page by Page face. Yeah. Oh my god. He's you don't. We got to talk about this, Pete. I, like I was waiting for this for a long time. <laughs> but go ahead, boo. He called him an amateur. I love it. I love it. Come on, super boss. The floor <laughs> is yours. My bad. Oh my my bad. <laughs> this just the, put me off guard. The host Wait. with the most. 
Did he really do this? He really no. did do the. Oh wait. I'm not like like. Did Daniel Bryan actually like you know? They they they, they like worked the camera way. right, so you. Got you. Got you. So he sucked a screwdriver on national television. That's what she said. <laughs> See, I didn't want it to be me. But... <laughs> oh my god! So we will. Are we gonna catch everyone? I don't see blood. I was wondering if there would be blood soon because that's definitely the AW thing. Um, but we will catch everyone. Oh gosh. You know what? I think I should let us. We should just watch AEW. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you should so be like, your outro, wait. boo. It's lit the night here in the club. Club don't want to close. It's lit. The yep. club don't want to close. The club's like Uh-oh. one more song. One more song. So like, I did damn. have a question that I wanted to uh, ask Brink for next week. Everybody has to bring their unpopular opinion about, and it was going to be about the four horse one. <laughs> Hmm. Patricia, we're really gonna do this? Wow, wow, that's how you feel. I mean, how, how dare you? We're really gonna do this. You know how you know how Justin, you know how Justin is main evented out. I love y'all. I'm 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 four horsewoman the fuck out. She didn't say which one. No offense. No, no. I all of it. I'm I'm four horsewomen, four horsemen, four horse guinea pigs. I don't care. I'll four anything. I'm out right now. Like I can't like even though the route the, the the Mount Rushmore conversation mm. it gets real. It gets too real. Like <laughs> disgusting. Yeah them like is- I'm telling you Where's my lighter? I might as well just yeah, hand it like here. You want some kerosene too? I'm glad you called. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's it. Disgusting like, them is like disgusting like my children and Sasha's like my favorite. Charlotte's like the one. Yeah, I adopted, use her real name because she I knows. Love them I'm like, all, like <laughs> so, so what popular. should we ask? I mean, you already put it out there. They might as well. They're gonna go ham if you if you tweet that. I mean, look at how great this unpopular opinion was. We might as well just. Mm, Take the shot and put a band aid I mean, over it. We could do like, there's so many things we can do, which I think is exciting because you can really talk about wrestling forever and ever and ever and ever. You know? So you could talk about everything except for the four horsemen or women. But okay. I get you. Wait, we so can then start what there. We, what should we do? What should we, what should we talk about? And it doesn't necessarily have to be. We could do an unpopular about- opinion about heels. Oh, speaking of heels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, we just speaking met of. um what's his name? I'm gonna call him Jack. Yeah, no, he's Jack. I mean he's Jack. Stephen Mellow than everybody else, but we wrestling yeah. fans. He's Jack. Jack Wait, who? From Heels. Um, you watch you Heels? Know, show Heels. Oh shit, really? Oh yeah, about yeah, that. He was at everything because he would he just loves wrestling. Like he mm-hmm. fucking loves it. <laughs> like at the bar with everyone, and he was welcoming everyone to talk about heels and everyone to talk about <laughs> he had a whole congregation. <laughs> what I would have no, for that though, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, you guys, FTR is on. Y'all know how I feel about FTR. I mean, so, they're gonna do the same thing, wrestling they ain't gonna talk. You, you watch you your tongue sir <laughs> i will not accept but, any dax then stop no, it dylan you too I, I like them you know cash wheeler thought i was the one that didn't like bret hart i'm like dude i'm the biggest bret hart fan on the screen mm. oh she got she got right rock to the music <laughs> i was like what happened <laughs> <laughs> he knows how i feel we went i was like this okay Boom. I got an unpopular opinion that we could probably talk about next week. Mm. AW a- women's division might be in a better place than WWE's women's division. <gasps> we get, oh, let's open with that one. Let's open with that one. Yeah, because I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to let y'all digest <laughs> on that. And I'm going to give, we're going to have. Either. We're gonna have it ready for next week, but I'm gonna let y'all die just on that. That that's goody, cause I mean, uh, 
uh, yeah. I appreciate y'all allowing me to jam to my favorite oh, theme. By all means. Mm-hmm. You know what I need? I need to get the jacket. Though. I think I need to. I think I need to treat myself for my birthday. P. I think I'm gonna get that. My birthday is coming up. Holy crap! Yes. I love how you just like remembered. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. April oh, is of Cienzo. Dylan, come ready next week. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> Dylan, better, Dylan gonna come in hot. We gonna have Correct. a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thousand percent. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're, we're gonna. I feel like I'm man. I'm manifesting me and Dylan very soon. I don't know why. I just feel like mm. it, I. That's one. I don't know. It's weird. Don't think it's weird, Dylan. If you're watching this, but I was like, I'm like Dylan's just he's like definitely watching but, it. He's definitely <laughs> watching it. He's just like. <laughs> but I just feel like it, meeting him would just be like one of those moments where it's yeah. just like you meet your like you meet people that are in communication with like in between him. And Jer- Jeremy, I, I know we're really close with um I, I don't sleep sandal. We know, honey. We know. We don't. We know. But I, you, you know soul. what it is? You mean Dylan finally is gonna feel like we've known him forever. That's what it's mm-hmm. gonna right. be. Right. Which has felt like so just like Jermaine. Whenever if, if we meet Jermaine, I feel like I'm like, what's up, bro? Like Vaughn. It was the same way. I feel like I knew Vaughn as soon as I met him. I was like, Oh hey, what up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I said it too. I was like, <laughs> Justin too low key. Mm-hmm. I gave him the biggest hug when I met him. Mm-hmm. Yes, you did. I surprised. No, you know what everyone. too? I felt like that with Brian because P had already spoken you guys up a lot post WrestleMania. Mm. So I was like, okay, if she's speaking so highly. Of like, especially with Justin and Steven and with Brian, I was like, okay, these must be really good people. Cause you know, that's not the first time you met. Did me. Y'all meet no, I know it's not the. <laughs> did, wait, <laughs> did, was it the first time we wait? We both met when we both depressed. <laughs> wow, like, Brian said that. I didn't happened. really like. I really didn't like meet you, meet it's, you because I was. You can laugh at it now. Right, right, say right. So I feel like I brand new met you. Yeah, after, right. no, I, feel I I'm, I'm, I'm felt the first time I met Justin as the first time I met him because it was really after like a SmackDown, I think. Yeah, it was but a SmackDown at MSG, and I surprised the hell out of everyone because I was like, No, nah, I'm not gonna be there, I'm not gonna be there. And I purposely wanted to surprise Issa, mm. but then I also knew you guys were also there because like everyone of wrestling Twitter in New York City pulled up to that MSG show, but then they also went to the after party. So I was like, I'm just gonna ah, fuck up, yeah, but I'm gonna. Awesome. And I got a, cute. I got a it video of it too, where I where Issa is doing a video with I think either Mimi or P, and I just sneak up behind her and surprise her, and she freaks mm. the fuck out, and so does P, and yeah. so does me, because they're like, I thought you were like. I remember that because I didn't know you at the time, and we were taking a, a selfie, and I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. they they got to oh, have their moment. <laughs> it was like, who that? Oh, that's Jay. It's like, yeah. <laughs> And that then was, was, for your those Russell are the girls, times, bro. I can't wait for more of those to come back. And that's where for the three anniversary, that's where we formally met Matt. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the same goes mm-hmm. for Brian. I was giving Brian all his fucking flowers. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like it was like my first time really getting to be like in that space. Cause it's like yeah. I've I've knew of everybody, but I huh? May 20th. Yeah, like it, it's like the first of me being in this space. Like I knew of everyone, but it wasn't like I really knew everyone. That was so, a phenomenal day. It was what a, what a damn day, man. It was. That was Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. That, that, that was, was like, worth from me and the popcorn like seven, to eight hours of driving. <laughs> that was it was a, a good night driving, but it was so worth it. And the after party, so worth it. if y'all were there. After party? Mm-hmm. We gotta, I gotta, we gotta throw more after parties, yo. We do. Those are only- that's the me manifesting uh, this apartment. I don't even have to be that. I could just be like, y'all come to the house. Yeah. I feel like I. If you say it on it, on this platform, it happens. So yeah, I mean, recorded. there's there's about like only seven people in that chat that I would be like, yeah, you, you can come to <laughs> out, but because <laughs> P knows me. P know how I feel about my yard. 
My yard's big, but I don't rock them all. But we made the cut. We made the Dylan, cut. Dylan, you definitely better pull up. Okay, you need oh, to pull up. God. You need to pull up like you an Uber. Get mm -hmm. your ass here. But yeah, I just you know. At the very least, this... Dylan, Philly. Yeah, oh, I want to see you in Philly, dude. I even think that if Dylan's just like, "Hey guys, I'm in DC," I'm be like, "All right, P, listen, the Honda can make it. We can make it." Like, let's DC, just... you're in my backyard. DC, this is me, and Brian's literally like not even an hour away. It's so Baltimore. Y'all stop, is... stop telling that lie. Baltimore to DC <laughs> is an hour. Everybody keeps saying 45 minutes. No, it's not. That's true. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> our, our, our stupid traffic is <laughs> like, yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Barely saying... traffic is no joke, bro. It make it makes New York traffic just look like everybody just stopped to take selfies. I swear. I don't understand <laughs> yep. how y'all have traffic from the morning to the morning rise to the sundown. I don't get it's it. It's simple because when everything happened with the recession, everyone came to DC because DC had a lot of jobs, but we didn't mm. we don't have the public transportation to take on like everyone's mm. coming here. And then in the last decade, a lot of tech companies, Amazon. All your IP stuff also started coming here. So everyone's moving to DC, mm. but DC is like super small. Like DC itself, you could put in the borough of Brooklyn and Brooklyn can engulf that hole. And then you have oh. Southern Maryland, you have Mo County, PG County, which is like PG County is the hood. Mo County is like, yeah, I don't want to go out there either. And then you have my <laughs> neck of the woods, Northern Virginia, which is like, you got to have some coin to live out here. But a lot of it's not. Um, public transportation accessible, so you gotta have cars and drive. But you have highways. It's like we didn't expect this super boom of everyone's down in the last fifteen years here. So now we gotta expand yeah. highways. We gotta expand like they just expanded like the trains here. They they're now expanding highways, but it's just like there's so many people here, and you have to drive. It's like it New like, York, yeah. but if there's no public transportation, and everyone has to drive. That's how I was starting to feel like in Jersey. Like, P will even tell you, like, if she looks outside her window, she'll see, like, four new, brand new apartment buildings being built. Because when everybody started bringing their, like, Amazon, Wayfair, Blue Apron, all these jobs, these factory jobs yep. started opening up in Jersey. If you go down the parkway, it's a factory and an apartment complex and a neighborhood. That's all you see. Like, and now they're even talking about bringing, like, a movie theater to Newark and already, like, there's mad apartment buildings being built outside of Newark and Linden and all the, like, it's ridiculously crazy. And it's like, everyone, like, I used to be able to leave my job and be home in 20 minutes. If I don't leave at three o'clock, I don't get home for like an hour, 45 minutes. And this is New Jersey. Like they've been fixing route three coming out of the Lincoln tunnel for five years and there's still traffic. I don't get it. They made the white wall rider and there's traffic, you know? So well, wow. infrastructure. All right. Conversation for another day, though. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like we should do spaces, too. Oh, yeah, we should. Totally oh, should. Stay tuned. I, we, we, Y'all not ready for us. <laughs> so many ideas. A little time. All right. Tune this into is Wrestling Realm at 1030. Yes, yes, Thank yes. You. Do, that, do that, do that, do that. Everywhere, streaming everywhere, and where fan club. Everyone, Twitch, everyone, on Twitch, 7 p.m. <laughs> 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 